Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the program tonight, uh, Deliverance with Pastor Henry. I'm your host. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are going to go right ahead here, and we're going to bring in my co-host of the program, uh, Greg Norman. Greg, good to have you with us here tonight. Good to be here with you, Pastor Henry. I'm looking forward to this. We're going to have a good one tonight. We want to welcome everybody. Make sure you take this moment to share this program, like, share it. Let everybody know um, that we're live and on the uh, air tonight. But we got a great subject we're going to be talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about the malicious games that Mind Control plays from the Octopus. And I'm going to go ahead, Greg. You Will you just take it there for a moment? I've got to go. I don't know why it's like this here on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. But I am going to go on over there, and I am going to um, get my Facebook page and get it live. Uh, they got it private when I do this here, so I guess they don't want anybody to see it. So if you'll take it there just for a moment, then I'll have it here. Okay, and I'll do my very best. And I, once again, Pastor Henry welcomes you to Deliverance with Pastor Henry. And uh, I believe with all my heart and soul that this is going to be a very, very interesting but wisdom-filled broadcast. And again, I believe everyone who is going to be here tonight is supposed to be here tonight, guided by the Holy Spirit. So once again, if you have any questions for Pastor Henry during the broadcast, please share them in the chat. So let's get back to Pastor Henry. Yeah, here we are, everybody. We're here. Let's take, let's pick it up here uh, and see what some of the people here were saying. We got Truth Seeker. I know Truth Seeker. He's coming on in here with us. God bless. He's ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see all the people popping in here, brother? Oh, they're getting getting busy for you, Pastor Henry. Oh, yeah, we got uh, Sarah Johnson. God bless Sister Sarah. We know who you are as well. God bless everyone. I uh, got a lot of people telling us hello. Hey, when you do, tell us where you're from. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us the city. Let us know. Give us the country. <laughs> Let us know what's taking place. Oh, there you go. Uh, Walter Brin, that's my sister, and Walter Brin. He's the famous knife maker. You all got to check him out. I was just on the phone with her just a few moments ago. That is uh, watching from Etowah, Tennessee. Woo, go Tennessee. <laughs> All right. Anybody else there, Greg, we're looking at? Who we got there? Uh, yeah, Iris you. Rose. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. We just came back from a, uh, a va uh, just a few days off up in Tennessee. But uh, we call it a vacation, but I did a lot of work while I was up there mm -hmm. and uh, taking care of things. But God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much for the birthday uh, blessings that everybody sent our way and wishes towards us. Uh, yeah, let us know where everybody's from now. Not everybody knows who y'all are. Mm -hmm. Give us a, oh, here we go. Shalom here, all the way from Valma Bear. Tell us where you're from, Valma. Vil Valma, yeah, Vilma. Um, Annette, God bless Annette. Good to see you here. God, oh, I know who that woman there is. Who's that there, uh, brother? You know who that is? Oh, yeah, yep. She's out of the house, so she's listening in the car, Pastor Henry. Yeah, you got to tell us who that is. Uh, Rebecca Mars Norman. That's my wife there, so hello, uh, Rebecca. <laughs> God bless. Oh, we got one look here. Now, this is now this is how you do it right here. Uh, we got Charleston, South Carolina. Wow. Uh, it's here. Pilot Chrissy, God bless. This one here I got from uh, Indiana. Living from Messiah in Indiana. That's what I'm talking about. Excited so, about the stream. So, Pastor Henry, what has happened over the last several weeks with your deliverance ministry? It has to be God. 
Wow. Then there's a lot took place here. I'm talking about a lot that's taking place. So let, let's just give everybody an update on what is taking place. Tonight we're going to be talking about mind control and the the crazy games that mind control plays uh, mm-hmm. on people's heart, on their life, and and different things. Here's what we're talking about. Malicious mind games from the octopus. That's what we're going to talk about. But before we get there, let's just take, let's just take a, a, a few minutes here to let everybody know who, who is tuning in and going to watch this broadcast later on is, um, first of all, I want you to know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for the response, uh, for the shares, the likes, the, um, subscribing to the channel deliverance with pastor Henry and, um, you know, I, you know, Greg knows me enough to know I'm not into the, you know, how many subscribers I have and things like this here. It's like, but I do realize that there are people who wanting to know and want to hear him, hear me say something. And uh, because I do it anyway, don't I, Greg, even when we don't have you, but I'm going to get on here and, and tell you what the message of the Lord is. It is the truth. And uh, so we do that. And, um, but we do thank you for the, the subscriptions. Um, make sure that you go to YouTube. Deliverance with Pastor Henry, and you subscribe there. Make sure that you like it here on Facebook if you're watching on the Facebook. Deliverance with Pastor Henry. And then also, everybody needs to be aware of this here. In the event we get taken down from YouTube, there is the the channel with the same name that is on Rumble. And that's a paid thing that we do so that we have access to that Rumble. And I'm streaming there to it right now. So that if YouTube knocks me off, then we have it on Rumble. So make sure that you go there as well and you subscribe to Rumble that you'll get that notification uh, via your email or whatever you're looking at. So do that so that we don't get, if we in the event something happens, you can stay with us. And uh, so let's tell you what has happened. Uh, Several weeks ago, I think it was this Saturday or today, two weeks ago, uh, um, um, Jennifer Bagnashi from Deep Believer YouTube channel, uh, she released the interview that I did, and it was like a two-hour interview talking about the supernatural things that I had seen in life all the way up to where uh, we have a deliverance ministry now. And and when I tell you about having a deliverance ministry is that we've had for the last seven years, ever how you look at it, we've had seven years that people have come from all over the United States all week long, every Sunday, God sends them um, from the furthest places in America to come for deliverance. And he said that he would do that. Now, I know God's raising a lot of deliverance ministries up, and things are getting on board with that. But God established the ministry. And to that point, I had always believed in the supernatural and doing a lot of things, praying for people who had demonic spirits or something like that. But a different anointing came um seven years ago and that's the operating anointing that we operate in now and it's all glory to god i mean we can't do anything except it be done by the holy spirit in jesus name so we just operate in that anointing and people come they get set free they get healed many people get miracles uh they get baptized in the holy ghost evidence of speaking in tongues uh just a lot of things that god does uh in the ministry we do training now as well but when Jennifer released that video uh, 14 days ago, is my phone actually uh, and my email addresses, uh, all the things that the venues that I gave in that, that the, the video for them to contact me has been used and overwhelmed. And it's so overwhelming that we have uh, so many people from America wanting deliverance from all the states. If you can imagine all the states uh, wanting deliverance and contacting us, they have done that. And not only that, but we have uh, across the world. I have never seen and never had the response like we have had across the world. And I'm talking about from uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, Dubai. We've had places. uh, I I, I told Greg about it today that I got a... um, a, 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 an email, an email from, um, South Korea. Mm-hmm. And I get contacted from all the countries. Uh, I'm talking about all the countries, uh, Nigeria, uh, Mozambique, 
uh, uh, Africa, uh, Austria, the Cayman Islands, um, England, the UK, uh, Canada, Hawaii. Um, I mean, just everywhere as everybody's been contacting us for deliverance. So what I've done is that I have a group of uh, ministers that are with us that are part of what is called the Spiritual Freedom Network. Past, Deliverance with Pastor Henry works with that group. We, I mean, we developed it. We started it. And it's a ministry from within the church that I pastor at called University Parkway Church of God here in Aiken, South Carolina. And other people who have, who have went through deliverance, that our deliverance ministers have come to connect with us, it's not, an, it's not an organization to oversee, but it is on the same level as if you contact me wanting deliverance and they are right down the street from you and we have taken them through deliverance and we can vouch for their ministry is we tell you, hey, right, they're right down the street from you. And we have trained these people as well. So they have access to us if they need help uh, in delivering people. Um, I have been on the phone with people before they've called and said, Hey pastor, I'll be riding down the road and say, Hey pastor, I'm having a problem getting the spirit out. Will you help me? And we'll sit there a few minutes and give us some insight, pray about it. And next thing you know, the spirit just comes out, but it's, you know, it's all glory to God because we can't do anything, but right. we have right. access to each other. You know, we have access on that level. So you're going to hear me talk about the spiritual freedom network and, I had a meeting several times while I was off last week or this week when I was out of town. And we brought a lot of the ministers together saying, how are we going to handle this? So with all the phone calls that came in through the phone calls, the number I gave out, what we did is, um, what we did is, um, got a lot of information from people so that, um, we could start putting together a form because now it's just not like someone calling and saying, hey, pastor, I need help. It was more than that. It was like people calling from uh, South Korea. Or they were calling from uh, Canada or Russia. Got phone call. <laughs> got phone call from Russia. Uh, all kind of stuff. Uh, so getting these phone calls overwhelmingly is that now it's a matter of that when they contact us is that I need to know if you go to the uh, spiritualfreedomnetwork.com website you're going to see at the top if you're searching for deliverance. Now, if you've already filled one of these out, don't do it again. But if you haven't filled one of those forms out, you need to go there now or when this program's over with, go to spiritualfreedomnetwork.com. Right at the very top, it's going to be, are you searching for deliverance? You click on that and just put in your name, your address. It's going to ask you some personal questions that we need to know, like what what time zone are you in? Uh, what city are you in? Uh, what country are you in? Uh, and tell us the problems. And uh, we need to know uh, just certain things that are there. And then it will come to us and we will, we will go through them and divvy these up to people that we know that can help get these things done. Because if you haven't heard from me yet, uh, it's not because I, you, you don't know how many hours I've spent praying over you or uh, or listen here, being so concerned about the, the information that's coming and I read it and everything. And it's just like, man, I, I, I want to help everybody. And, um, so we have to prioritize what's going on. Uh, if you live within a couple of two or three hours of Aiken, South Carolina, then I'm reaching out past that to people who are further away because two or three hours, you can make it to Aiken. Um, but they're still going to, uh, select who can, you know, who we contact after that, you know, so how much further away, how many hours, four, six, eight, ten 10 hours. Uh, and then you go past that driving distance is those who were there. Some people are bedridden. They can't get out. They, they don't, there's no way. And then of course, then there are people who are out of country that were doing that. So God, if you heard us, God, God has connected you with us and that we are working through is sorting through, uh, the plans to get to you so that we can pray with you, whether it be Zoom. Uh, when you go there and you fill that form out, you're going to find out we're going to ask you questions. Can you Zoom? Can you Skype? Can you StreamYard? Can you do Watts? Can you fa FaceTime? We need to know the venue. Uh, we don't need to try to contact you, first of all, to get all that information. Fill that form out. Boom, that helps us plan the time. There's even a place there where you can select the time that works good for you uh, to go through deliverance. 
but you got to let us know when it is and we can marry up the person or marry myself up with you so that we can pray with you. Does that make sense, Greg, what's going on? <clears throat> Total sense. It, it's really amazing being an outsider, Pastor Henry, and noticing how God is really elevating uh, your deliverance ministry. And I believe what's about to happen. And uh, once again, in 2023, your vision, I think God is really edifying the body of Christ. Yeah. So there, thank you, Greg. So there is a, Greg has been with me, uh, I don't know, over a year now, and he's watched the ministry progress because we do things like this together. But it's like one step after the other. God's just elevating uh, what, he, and when I say elevate, he's just making it so we reach more people. Uh, Jesus is the answer, and he uses people. And um, he uses the venue of deliverance with Pastor Henry to help people. And, uh, so, and, and I want to do that. And uh, so don't don't become discouraged if we haven't gotten back with you right away. But I have other ministries that are working, other people that are part of our teams working on right now. Right now, I have a database of over 80 people that came in through one venue. And we're going through there saying, okay, everyone that has something to do with a spirit spouse, I want to deal with. Mm. Uh, there's other one. There's other ones that are through there. People are selecting them out, which who's are out of country. Uh, and then, you know, we could mark those and get them up. But when I tell you that we've been overwhelmed, the phone system at the church where I pastor at, uh, absolutely locked up. Whether it, I mean, it, the mail, my mailbox is full. The general mailbox is full. And we just got to go through there and start sorting out. Power supply went bad. And uh, I just had to unplug the phone. It was just constant. I'd be taking people through deliverance at church, and it just constantly ring. But that doesn't mean you don't that you're not going to call. You need to call, get your voicemail in. Main thing is, um, is going there to spiritualfreedomnetwork.com. Again, filling out that form if you haven't. And uh, just request deliverance. And someone contact you, and they will do it. Got anything else, Greg, we're talking about here before we get started? Pastor Henry, once again, I'm um, sure I asked you this question several times. Can you believe as a pastor what God is doing in your uh, life? I mean, to witness this is all, only God could do this, Pastor Henry. Well, you know, um, it was it was uh, about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, my associate pastor came into the office where I'm getting ready to go preach before I go out to minister. And the Lord told him that God had given him a dream and that we had done a video that went viral. Now I've done thousands. I mean, I'm going to say thousands. I've done hundreds of videos over seven years uh, on a Christian radio station. And so I do videos all the time. And he said, well, you got one that's going to go viral. And, uh, and the Church of God, that's a ministry that I'm part of. They, they wanted him to tell me to shut it down and not do deliverance anymore. And he told them in the dream, you need to learn what this man is doing. Every one of y'all need it. <laughs> well, anyway, he told me that. Uh-huh. And uh, everyone that uh, says that was, uh, uh, you know, they, they were saying that, I said, well, we'll see what happens. And then sure enough, we did that video with, now we hadn't even had a plan. We didn't even know Jennifer Bagnashi yet. She had not contacted me at anything about doing a video. So I did the video, she posted it. And then, oh my, oh my God, this thing here just went crazy. So God knows what he's doing and he's, he's doing this here. And uh, another thing is just to let everybody know as we get ready to start here, that there, I'm going to be a speaker at a conference, at a deliverance conference. It's going to be in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, uh, with with Greg Locke at his church there, Global Vision Bible Church, and uh, that's going to be, uh, I think it's next weekend, is when we're going to have it. It's supposed to be starting next weekend. It's a conference that's free. Uh, so they're going to have people from all over the United States come. That is going to be. Where am I, where am I at? Uh, uh, it's going to start 4th, 5th, and 6th. I think it's 4th, 5th, and 6th of September. And that is where he's going to be at. But we're going to have some great speakers. Do you know some of them names, Greg? Did you know who they were? Well, I'm familiar with uh, Daniel Adams, if I'm not mistaken. And the other, uh, the second one, is it Valve? 
I, I'm not sure of his last pronunciation of his last name, but very well known. They're very well known in the uh, for deliverance ministry, Pastor Henry. Yeah. So uh, Greg Locke is a is a, a good friend of mine, and I'm actually uh, I'm the one that um, actually introduced Greg Locke to the deliverance ministry. You know, he's on fire all the way across uh, America. And uh, he came by the church. We were on a, he was on a, a USA tour as far as like a, a restore America, you know, getting involved in churches and all that stuff into America, politics and stuff like that. And he came by the church and um, the Lord told me, he said, you need to talk to him about deliverance. And I took him in my office. Uh, this was December of 21. And he said, Pastor, this is exactly what I've been waiting confirmation for. And since that time of 22, uh, he's been on fire with deliverance and he's preaching everywhere. And people are coming from all over the United States to Mount Juliet, Tennessee, to Global Vision Bible Church. And uh, Greg Locke and, um, and uh, all of them are on fire there. So he's got a conference going on. It's free. I want to invite you to come be part of that. Uh, they are going to let yours truly uh, uh, speak there at the conference. And uh, I'm just going to turn loose and let God talk about what they ever want me to talk about <laughs> and talk about deliverance come talk about deliverance everybody needs deliverance hey, pastor henry why do you think now more than any time in history why are more people now open uh, to uh deliverance now it's god's timing i honestly believe what god is doing is that god is um preparing the remnant uh is repairing the remnant for um, the rapture. That's what I think. Because he says um, in Joel 2.32, it says, it talks about that there will be deliverance in Mount Zion and Jerusalem and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So if he's called you, deliverance is what he's called you to. And deliverance is what breaks the bondage of sin. People, people that do not want to uh, talk about sin or talk about the bondage of sin they just never have really been in church before where they really understand that um, that just because you get saved and you come under the, the auspice of Jesus Christ and setting you free does not, you know, from sin, the penalty of sin does not mean that all of your sin actually goes away. I, I mean, your bondage just goes away. People come to church, they get saved, and they're still bound with pornography. See what I'm talking about? There's people who go to church and get uh, they get saved and they want to know, uh, why can't I overcome pornography? Why can't I overcome drugs? Why can't I overcome some kind of addiction? And it's because there are spirits of addiction, uh, that people need. And God is raising that. He wants you free of that. And deliverance has been something that has, uh, been a, people are afraid to talk about it. And another thing is it really, it really puts the, the burden on the pastors to really start to fleece to, to really start taking care of their flock. See, it's like, uh, when we're talking about having, uh, when we're talking about having, um, deliverance or people having problems, well then, and they believe that there are demonic spirits that are tormenting them and they're telling them that's what they are. Well, the pastor will tell you, well, there's no way a Christian can have anything like that. You just need to subdue the flesh. And then if you subdue the flesh, then, you will be all right. You need to come to prayer meetings more. You need to do this more. You need to get involved in this more. If you started getting involved in all these things, then you won't have time to be battling all of that, all of that stuff that you're, you're complaining about. Well, that's not true. The thing is, when the sheep that, that were under the shepherd and they would get these uh, things that would get in their, their fur, the burrs and all that stuff, the shepherd has to take time to go over there and get that burr out of that sh out of the out of the wool, it takes some time to undo that and to get that thing out. And look how many they would have. They may have a bunch of them. And the thing is, every one of them's got it. Does that make sense? It takes time for the shepherd to take care of his flock. He just does not leave them out there and not take care of them. I mean, there there are things that the shepherds did when uh, they would have to dip them in oil. They would have to put he anoints my head with oil, and they would put oil salve on the sheep and things like that when the bugs would come and they would all fly all around their eyes and everything and they would burrow into their nose these bugs would these flies would they would burrow into their nose 
and the sheep would be tormented out there. Those, that burrowing flies and all are nothing but demons, some symbolic of demons. But the shepherd would take them and put them in oil, and he would be able to coat them so that the, the bugs, the, the flies would repel. Well, see, pastors don't want to get in there and pull in bugs out of their nose and all that kind of stuff and help them help their sheep uh, recover. Uh, they just want to say, anoint them in oil in the name of Jesus and walk away from them. And deliverance is the children's bread, and deliverance is what Jesus came for. It's work to take care of people and to uh, cast demons out. It is work. That's why Jesus, so many times, he was so tired because mm. there was when virtue came out of him, and when someone slipped up behind him and virtue came out of him through a healing process uh, that took place there, a miracle, then look at here, who touched me? He felt that leave him. Well, that's the same thing when you start taking people through deliverance. And this is what the Lord instruct, instructed me to do. Take my people through deliverance, lay hands on them for a miracle. And he told me, he says, I'm the one who does the miracle, God. He says, all I need you to do is lay hands on them, and then I do what I do. Uh, it's not up to me. I can't do the miracle God does, but he uses people to do it with. And many times people, they get a miracle uh, from deliverance. They get that miracle that they've been wanting because it's been so tied up with demon oppression uh, in their life. And But it is a very tiring, pro tiring process uh, of deliverance. And a lot of pastors, you ask them, why don't they do it? Because they don't want to expend the time or the energy. Now, that's just what I believe anyway. But when we take people through deliverance, it can be from minutes to hours that we will spend with people. Uh, I, I was able to get a phone call this week, and uh, and I called somebody who was just two or three hours from the church. And the reason I called them is be, they put in there that they were interested in training. And if you're interested in training and you you put that in your email, and I'm not telling you to use that as a keyword, but I look at that because – we're getting ready to have a level two training that's going to be taking place uh, um, October 7th, 8th, and 9th. It's going to be our level two training, and we have it here at University Parkway, Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, it is a paid event. Uh, it's an eight-hour class, and when I say eight hour, it's eight hours, and we fill you full of techniques of how to cast out demons and to be able to go for the strong man. And the title of the, the, of the uh, training is called Armed and Dangerous. That is the title of the training that we do at Level 2. You'll be armed and dangerous when you come out of this place here, this meeting. You'll do what we do. And um, we want to encourage you to come to be part of that October 7th, 8th, and 9th. And, 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 and I tell people, whether you hear this or not, listening right here on this venue, I and mean, if I still didn't have this many people, I would still be doing the training, and God always fills it up. I don't know where they come from, but they come from all over the United States, and they come for training at this place. It's one-on-one -on -one training, and we spend a lot of time with you, and we'll take you through deliverance prior to that training as well. That's a requirement for on that Friday before. You cannot set in the training we do and not go through deliverance before because you will start manifesting when you start hearing what we talk about and I'll show you videos of people going through deliverance. Well, to get back to the point, I took a lady through deliverance this week that was on the phone, and she was talking about training. She was like two or three hours away, so I called her. She was in North Carolina and uh, started talking about uh, what she was dealing with. And while we were there, she was sitting at the park, uh, and you know, where people walk around the track at and everything. She was just sitting in her car and she was praying and I called her and I said, let's talk about training. Then I told her what we what was coming up. And then I started telling her, I said, ma'am, tell me what's going on. Tell me, tell me, tell me your issues. Tell me what's happening here. And then she started talking about, um, mind control. And that's what we're talking about. The games, the, that mind control plays, uh, with people and they torment people. And this spirit called mind control, everyone, is a, is a supernatural spirit that God supernaturally showed me uh, how to deal with, this spirit called mind control. But mind control is an octopus, and he sits right on top of the head. And I cannot express this enough, is that everyone who has not went through deliverance, everyone has this. 
everybody has mind control. And mind control starts with us. You can be born with this spirit. And that was one of the things that we were talking with Jennifer Bagnashi about in that, that Deep Believer channel about mind control and how that people are born with this and that many people are birthed with it. And it's like this here is uh, when a person is born and just say they're in the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And when that spirit, when that, when that baby is birthed and separates from the mom and then the cord is cut is that all the demonic spirits that the mama has and the baby can already be demonized. Because if the baby, if the demonic spirits are there in the body and the mind, will, and emotions, then all that, all that can interfere with the baby. Like if the mother did not want the baby, the baby can be born with spirits of rejection, uh, abandonment. They don't want the baby. They're going to get rid of the baby. They hear mom and dad talking and fussing and all of this stuff, anxiety and anger. If the mom's been involved with, uh, uh, all type of addictions and things like that. I mean, I took a young lady through deliverance here just the other day. And, um, I have a, a friend, pastor friend that's over here in, in Deering, Georgia. And he has, he has a church there and they're, they're on fire for deliverance. Matter of fact, the pastor came for deliverance, had been in bondage for seven years with an infirmity and could not hardly walk. And after we prayed for him, this is probably a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, he's able to walk, no pain. God gave him a miracle. Not only that, now the miracle is being released in his church. And he's taking people through deliverance. Well, that was a very difficult case that he had. So he brought this, uh, this young lady over. I guess she had to be 28, 30 years old, something like that, uh, in bondage to, uh, uh, to suicide, uh, had jumped out of a window and tried to kill herself. I may have said this on another video Had tried to kill herself, but we sat down and we talked with her. Uh, and it was on a, I think it was on a Friday evening about, uh, eight o'clock at night. We started praying with her. And as we started praying with her, taking her through deliverance and through the interview process, I found out she was pregnant. And here's what I said to that, that, that mama. I said, you're how far along with the baby? I, and I can't remember how, how many months she was. I says, but let me tell you what happened to Sister Schaefer, my wife. This was years ago uh, when we were not serving the Lord. Uh, but, I, you know, I got children 40 and 45 years old. But they were we were young, having our children at young. We were in our 20s, early 20s, having our children. Uh, and, soon, and, and, you know, we smoked and we were in bondage to a lot of those things. But immediately... When Sister Schaefer found out that she was pregnant, she stopped smoking just like that. Mm. She, knew that she was affecting the baby. And uh, I told that mom there, I said, let me tell you what. I said, you got a choice whether you decide to do what you want to do. I said, but that baby that's inside you does not have a choice. You need to stop doing that right now. Now, that, that's all I'm going to say. And uh, after the deliverance, I got to tell you what happened. So we take this female through deliverance. We take her all the way through. And we spend four or five hours with her and her pastor's in the room with me. We're training him how to do what we need to do. His son's in the room with me and we pray over this woman, take her through some wild, listen to me, y'all, some wild deliverance, very uh, violent, very violent deliverance. And as we took her through deliverance and got through at the end of it, uh, she got baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in, in another language, got a full language, beautiful language. And we found out that after her deliverance, that that was like on Friday, Saturday, she goes to church on Sunday. When she goes into church Sunday, she came in and testified and said, I am not the person that you saw last week. I am different. I am, I, I am delivered and I am set free. And uh, she's quit smoking. Um, and she went home to her husband and told her husband, we got to pour out all the liquor. We got to pour out all the bottles of stuff we got in the house. Uh, I mean, they went through the place, started cleaning their house. Out. When you get delivered and you get the real thing, then you're going to want to, you're going to fight for your deliverance. You're to stay free. And she did, but so much mind control that she was involved with. And when this spirit of mind control came out of her, of course, all the suicide and all the resentment and hurt and deep hurt and 
all of that comes out uh, through my mind control is a very powerful spirit. And we encourage everybody that if you haven't been delivered from mind control, you do so now. And that um, you start telling us that, hey, um, I need deliverance from mind control. And I know many of you have who have watched uh, from mind control. So mind control is a very powerful spirit. And what we do, it's an octopus. He sits on the head and he wraps his tentacles around your head. And what he does, he, he uh, an octopus um, is so smart um, in the, in the uh, real world that he has a tooth that bites in the top of your head right here. And what he does in uh, an octopus in the real world, he bites into the, the, the brain or the head of the one that he's connected to with his beak, which is made out of, out of a, a bone. And he breaks the skin and he breaks that, that barrier there and he starts to suck the life out of a person. And that's what mind control does. He bites right through the very top of the head. Someone said, well, I got the helmet of salvation. Well, let me tell you what. He, he's on your head, and then you got the helmet on top of him because that's the way this thing works. Mind control was there first, and then you put the helmet on top of the head. Does that not make sense what I just said? Mm -hmm. That Greg, that makes sense what I just said? Total sense. So you're born with him. You get saved. You don't get... It's not a matter. He just jumps off and runs away. You put the helmet right on top of him. That's all you do. And the thing is, people don't understand why the Bible doesn't work in their life. It's because they got two things going on in their life. And, you know, and uh, I'm going to pop this up here a minute, um, Greg. You got something you want to say? So give me a moment here to shut up. and. Yeah. Oh, no, that's here. not a problem at all. What's really interesting to me. Uh, Pastor Henry was, you know, being born male and growing up and, like I said, being taught and conditioned to to be manly. I never realized that we could be influenced by demons, but to be open enough and allowing God to educate me, there's no better freedom than to know the truth. That is so true, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, you know, um, uh... So when we start talking about how men are, they're groomed. Let's, let's stay with that a moment. Can we do that? Good time. That, that let's talk about how men are groomed. Let's, let's talk about mind control and the games, the malicious games it plays with people. And, and I'm going to get back to the lady that we took care of there in North Carolina, because when we started coming against mind control, whoo <laughs> oh my Jesus, that was something else to be on the other end of the phone to hear what was going on there with mind control. So Greg, your job is to not let me forget about North Carolina mind control, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. So let me tell you how people are groomed. And I was just talking about this just the other day, is that men are groomed, women are groomed, our children are being groomed or mind control. Now, I want you all to think about this here. When we were growing up in our age, a lot of us went outside. We would play outside. They didn't have all the computers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, the toys and the things that we played with are things like, oh, I want you all to think about this here, where uh, you, could find, you could find cowboy and Indian. They would play cowboy and Indians. Some would dress up like cowboys and Indians. We'd have gun holsters, play gun holsters and things like that, and had cap guns. I mean, we'd had to have the cap guns with the sound. Mm -hmm. And things like that. Many people had rubber band guns. Well, we'd have wars with rubber band guns. I mean, we even had BB guns to where we had wars with BB guns. I'm talking about real BB guns, everybody. Mm -hmm. And we had to say, if you were part of the war, you could only shoot below the knees down. Down below the knees is the only place you could shoot a person. But we had real wars with BB guns in the neighborhood and things like that. Well, you got to think about as people now progress along the way, well, they don't want you to have guns. Nobody wants you to have guns. Nobody don't want. So there are the toys that are coming along now. They are no, you may have a horse, a horsey, but you don't have any cowboy and Indians. You don't have bow and arrows, play bow and arrows. We didn't make bow and arrows growing up and, and, and things like this here. Through our toys, we are being mind controlled. To where you're at now, you never played with them. You never imagined them in your mind or thing like this and put them in your hands doing anything. It's all in a video game. Then that's a virtual war. 
and things like that, building kingdoms and fighting. But the thing is, you never have had it in your hands so that when you get older, you may want one of these objects that could protect you or anything like that. Mind control. It's by design for us, for the next generation behind us, not to have or have any of these things or very easily give up some of the things that we have because we have been groomed, never having them growing up with them in games and things like that. And mind controlling the people. That's what's going on, everybody. And the thing is, people are, are have mind control spirits. Like I said, they are born with them. They are generational. Is that when the woman is born and that spirit at the separation of the cord, because of the rejection and all, all of that kind of things, can go and go right on into the baby. The spirit makes the choice inside. I'm going with the baby. I'm staying with the mother. I'm going with the baby or doing this here, or you may have several of them there and they split up and they go on with the baby and the baby is born demonized. And they are, many of them are born with addictions. Look here, mind control is over the addictions. It goes right on with the baby. Many people are born with mind control and they've never had a real thought on their own. And when we take mind control out of people, many people will say they'll, they'll sit there like they are in a daze and look around because there's nothing talking to them, telling them what to think. Mm-hmm. Or they'll get in bed that night and they'll go to sleep and they'll say, oh my God, look how real this is, how there's no voices in my head. So the games, the mind control is very vicious. And mind control, he controls all the areas, the communications in your head. You know, there's a scripture that goes along with this because people says, well, he's taught for this long and he doesn't use scripture. <laughs> You don't want me to get into scripture. I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. Somebody mm-hmm. shout amen. amen. So look at this one here. I want to show you this here, Greg, uh, where it talks about it uh, here in the Bible. Let me see if I can't find it right here. Uh, E-sword. Here we go. Right here. We're going to pop it up on the screen. I'm going to make it really big right here, Greg, so we can see this here. Mm-hmm. Here's what James says, the book of James. In James chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And when we talk about a double-minded man being unstable in all his ways, let me tell you what the Bible's talking about. You're going to read this thing different than you ever read it before. When a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, I want you to think about this here. You probably, some people are pretty smart. You've already got it. When you have mind control setting on your head like this, you're in control of your mind, your will, and your emotions, and your thoughts, and it's influencing your thoughts. You ready for this here? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Oh, got it. Yep. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Do you understand what I'm talking about now? Yeah. You, you, it's so simple, isn't it? That's a revelation right there, Pastor Henry. Yeah, so see, people read the Bible, and they read it through eyes of religion, and they don't read it through the through the things that God reveals that the reason so many people are unstable in Christianity is because they're battling mind control and they're unstable. Two minds trying to operate is, uh, is unstable in all their ways. Now, there are people who have split personalities. There are different things that people have. But at the, at the onset of the mind control games and all the vicious games that they play, it's not the person in control, but it's actually a double-minded, the other side, that's in control, taking controls of things. Wow. I have a quick question, Pastor Henry. Right. Pastor Henry, could some of our leaders, our political leaders, have a octopus spirit? Oh, yeah. Sure they do. Um, they do have um, octopus spirits, those who are um, in, in politics. Um, you ever, I mean, let me tell you how you know. You vote for them to get them in, and they say they're going to support Roe versus Wade, or they're going to do this, or they're going to vote for right to life and things. And they get there and they flip. <laughs> they said, that's, mm. they flip. we didn't vote for this person to do this here and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, that's called mind control is in control of that person. Mm. When they're pulling that lever and they're voting and raising their hands and all this stuff, that's a different demon. That's a spirit that's up there using that person to vote. Uh, to vote. Look at this one here. Daughter of God says, I need deliverance from mind control. Hey, you stay. You, I want everybody to stay. Uh, just a little bit longer towards the end, I'm going to take people through deliverance. 
uh, I'm going to speak to this spirit. I want you to get everybody. Oh, here, look here. Look at this one says, you ever heard of a potato gun? I sure have. You can't live in the South and never heard of that. Never heard of a potato gun, Pastor. Henry. Oh, yeah. Potato guns or something else. Uh, Pastor, what does this one here says? The devil attacked people with scriptures by twisting it. Yeah, but that's not me. <laughs> I'm not twisting it. I'm just trying to tell you what it really means. See, the devil takes twist the scriptures and twist it and said it doesn't mean it doesn't mean. Oh, let me go ahead and give you another one here. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Talk about mind control. Another one, uh, Greg. Yes, please let's do. do. Let's do it right here. Let's, let me let me go ahead and give everybody another one here. This gets me out of trouble here. Let everything be established out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let it happen right here. What does this one here says? Uh, Y'all hold on a minute here. James chapter four. Oh, it's over here. I'm sorry. I got to pop it up. I got so many screens open here that I have to get on the right one. James chapter four. Y'all know which one it is? Draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Clean your hands, you sinners. Okay, so he's telling you sinners, clean your hands. He's not talking about He's not talking about a Christian that's that. He's not talking about a sinner. He's talking to Christians, right? Mm -hmm. So well, he's talking to Christians who've done what? Who has done what? They have sinned in some way. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me pop it on up here so everybody can see it. You ready? Here we go. He's talking. You know, the Bible's written to Christians. Y'all know that, right? Everybody know that? You know, the Bible's written to Christians. <laughs> it's, it's a revelation showing you how you need to live. Does it try to convince people they're in sin? It is the word of God. Look at draw nine to God. He will draw nine to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. So he's talking about people who have done wrong. And matter of fact, James three is talking about um, the the two wells. Out of the same out of the well, saint comes out sweet water and bitter. My brother, and these things ought not so to be. Uh, so when he's talking about that, purify your hearts. Purify your hearts. What is he talking about right here? Ye double minded. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to tell you, if you draw nigh to God, draw, he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. And he's talking about double-minded. What's going on? The person is in sin, out of sin. They, for some reason, they've got a problem. And what happens is what Paul, when you read the book of James, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one that talks about the, um, he talks about a double-minded person. And that's, that's what mind control is. You, mm -hmm. can't, you can't overcome what you're trying to overcome. Because, listen here. Y'all listen to me. You're never going to walk in your fullness. You're never going to walk in the, in the peace of mind. You're never going to walk in it because the spirit called mind control is in control in your life. And he's a demon. Many people here, many people call me, and they'll tell me when I start talking about it. There's probably people here right now. They'll say, so I feel something gripping my head. Or they say, I feel it crawling on my head. All the way around. You know, I feel it crawling on my head and crawling around my neck, back of my neck and everything. There's something moving there. Well, that's that thing gripping because he, gri he grips and he holds on. He doesn't want to come loose and he bites right here. And the tentacles of mind control, that spirit is so smart, like I said before, is that they, the, the tentacles, the feelings that are in the tentacles wrap around your mind, will, and emotions. He knows exactly all your feelings. He knows your innermost thoughts. He's part of your mind. And he's in there, and he knows how to probe you, make you think about unforgiveness and resentment and hurt and deep hurt and uh, loneliness and anger and all of these things. He knows how to do this here. He's in control, and all, then all these demons start coming up, manifesting in your life. Then it's can lust, pornography, because he's over the sexual part, too, of the lust, pornography, uh, masturbation. All of these things are part of what mind control does. Got to get this thing off first. I can't implore you enough to tell you is that you've got to get this demon off. And uh, that's what I'm just talking about, mind control. He's, he's tormenting. He plays games with your mind is what he does. Hey, Pastor Henry, how can a person tell if they're being influenced, impacted by this, uh, the octopus spirit? Well, I think that um, to me how it is is that you want to do something and you want to follow God, but you know there's another voice in there that's talking to you. And I want you to think about this here. Listen to the voice that talks to you, and you should know the voice of God. If you hear something say, you or I, 
Listen to how it starts the words. Mm -hmm. I need to go cut grass or something says you need to go cut grass. Then you have to understand who is this you talking to me? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Look where the source of the voice is and everything. Source. That's correct. You look at the look for the source of it. And I'm looking for the source of Sister Schaefer getting some coffee here. <laughs> you think once she's listening again, to me in there? Well, Pastor Henry, once again, for those who are tuning in, today I spoke to you for a brief moment. And it's amazing uh, the revelation that God has given you. But God is about to do something, I believe, Pastor Henry. God wants to set people. Oh, I got, oh, I got one right here. Says She says, I'm coming to your church tomorrow. I'm so excited. God, bless, where are you coming from? Just tell me what city and state. Listen, you, you're on top of it, baby. Thank you so much. Hello, Patricia. I got, now, Sister Schaefer, I have, I have, I will say what, I, I have the best wife in the whole world. Oh, well, you do, Pastor. Uh, yeah. Um, she was five years old and I was seven when we got married. That's how, <laughs> that's how long we've been married. <laughs> Re Re Rebecca laughs when you say that, Pastor. Henry. Yeah, it's true, man. We've been married almost 50 years now. Wow. And uh, I'm just in love with her as I was when we saw her. At church, when we were there at church, whoo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for my control. <laughs> hey, hey, pastor Henry, that's interesting. You're a pastor. You have a deliverance ministry that God appointed to you. How is the wife of a pastor who is in deliverance? I mean, there has to be a lot of prayer involved in your relationship, Pastor Henry. Yeah, we have to pray over each other. Yep. We have to pray for each other and over each other. I can tell you some spirits. Uh, uh, spirits of uh, insanity mm -hmm. uh, through mind control and was called the Jerry Lewis spirit. <laughs> I had to, we had to pray over that while we were out of town. She had a, she had a dream. Mm. And, in, and in that dream um, that she was at home and she let someone come into the house. And then what happened is that she uh, could not get, and she came to let the person in. She stepped outside the ha the door and she had a piece of paper that showed ownership and she could not get back in to the apartment where she owned it at. And everybody was laughing and making fun of her about she'd lost her mind and all this stuff. And she was crazy. And this thing came to her mind that it, everybody was laughing at her like it was Jerry Lewis. If you know who Jerry Lewis is mm -hmm. and the comedian and everybody who knows Jerry Lewis said, man, that man must be insane because of the crazy way that he acted. Well, when I started taking her through deliverance from that dream, and y'all better listen to what I'm telling you about these dreams. Dreams are doorways of where demons come in at. And don't just say, you don't need to just say, I rebuke a dream. I rebuke that dream in the name of Jesus. You need to ask yourself in that dream, did something come into me while I was in that dream state and something came in? And I took her through deliverance for um, that um, dream. And when I started taking her through deliverance from the spirit of insanity that came in, um, called the Jerry Lewis spirit, then she started manifesting. This spirit came up and came out of her just like this here. It was a cold menthol type breathing coming up and coming out. And what happens is that so much witchcraft is done against pastors who have deliverance ministries or anointings that is impacting the kingdom of darkness. That's what right. happens is that witchcraft is sent against the spouse to, for them to be sick or to mentally impair them so that the, the minister's time is spent on trying to take care of the spouse and trying to take care of his wife, making sure she doesn't do something stupid and crazy like Jerry Lewis and uh, lose the ministry. So they're not able to do what they need to do when we call And that's just something that people need to be aware of is that witchcraft is done against ministries, against the spouse, the wife, to be able to uh, have them go, you know, how many of y'all, I'm going to say it like this here, don't laugh at me, how many of y'all know your pastor's wife's crazy? Well, it's because the spirit is there, and it is there by design to try to uh, dissuade the ministry from fulfilling the ministry, the mission that God has. So very anyway, pray. go ahead, brother. No, that's very interesting, Pastor Henry. Yeah, there's a lot. Of go ahead. No, go ahead, Pastor Henry. Henry, I interrupted. I mean, there's just a lot of people just don't understand spiritual warfare, and they just think these dreams are just, oh, man, that's crazy. And all, and they write them down. I said, no, no, a demon came in. Let's just make sure it didn't nothing come in. 
So through that dream, we were able to take her through deliverance, and it was called Spirit of Insanity, the one that hides behind Jerry Lewis. Sure enough, man, uh, she manifested. And this thing came up and came out of her. She said, it's cold like menthol. And you look like your menthol cough, cough drop. Mm -hmm. And you, and many times when you take a person through deliverance, they will feel this cool coolness or even a cold breath coming out because that's what a demon is, that cold breath. And when it's cold, that means it's coming out of deep waters, deep waters of their soul mm -hmm. uh, because that these spirits are, are uh, marine kingdom spirits. The deeper you are in the water, the colder that these things are when they come up and they come out of people and things like this here. Well, Pastor Henry, I know for sure since I've been uh, uh, supporting uh, you in understanding what deliverance ministry is, uh, the other side, I call it the other side, absolutely tries to visit in unique ways. So I'm learning really quickly here how strong spiritual warfare is. So uh, it, I never realized how real this is, Pastor Henry. Yeah, I want to show this one here about uh and i want and i wanted to come back to it this is jesse um says i have woke up with horrific headaches when i break free and wake up i have been binding and casting out the spirit of stroke could this be uh the mind binding spirit and yes that is one of the ones that we're going to deal with tonight the mind binding let me tell you um while we're here everybody let me tell you uh what happened uh with a lady at church uh, with this mind binding spirit and you said stroke um, the stroke spirit because that's in the head the mind um, this was probably four or five years ago and um, I was there at church this is when we had two services we would start at 10 o'clock in the morning and then we would at 11 o'clock we'd start preaching or start our service we'd finish up about 12 30 1 o'clock we take people through deliverance all day probably finish up many of us would finish up about five and then we'd have just enough time to run the town, grab a bite to eat. I'm talking about a hamburger or something and come back. And, and, uh, we would get ready to preach. It had a six o'clock service. So many of us were, and we, and we were right back in the pulpit all day long. Well, it was about five o'clock. It was one of those days I'm getting ready to go preach. There was a lady sitting there in the foyer and she's like 65 years old. And, um, I've got this on video and she testified of this. And here's what happened is I said, ma'am, I said, uh, did they pray with you? How did it go today? She says, well, I don't believe in all that stuff. I don't believe in all these demons and things like that. And um, I said, well, I understand that your, your husband here, and he here going through deliverance? She said, oh, yeah, he's back there in the back, and they're going through deliverance in one of, one of the deliverance rooms. And uh, I says, well, do you mind if I pray with you? I said, I heard that you'd had a stroke and that you could not read. And she said, that's right. She said, three years ago, I had a stroke and I couldn't read. And I said, well, can I pray with you? She says, well, I don't believe in all that stuff anyway. I said, well, ma'am, it doesn't matter whether you believe in it or not. I said, Jesus said demons would come out. If we called them out, they'd come out whether you believe it or not. I says, will you let me pray for you? She says, sure. So she got up. She went into the room right next to my office. I had a female minister in there with me. I sat in front of her, and um, we renounced the spirit called the stroke. Uh, anything that came in through the stroke or what have you. Then I looked at her and I said, you hear me? You spirit that's in her mind that causes the stroke. I said, come out of this woman now in the name of Jesus. Come up and come out of her. And she's just sitting there. She's got glasses on, you know. She's just sitting there kind of doing her head like that. I said, you hear me? I'm not like the rest of the pastors you sat in front of or pray for this woman. You coming out of this woman now in the name of Jesus. Come out, stroke. And when I said that, her eyes got really big behind them glasses because they were already magnified, got big behind them glasses. And all of a sudden, she started to purge. She started throwing up. And as she started throwing up, then the lady over there next to her gave her a, a little container there for, that she could uh, spit up in. And after she got through with that, she kind of tidied up herself a little bit there. I said, and I took a piece of paper like this here, and I said, and I wrote on it right there in front of me, and I said, can you read this here? And it said, and I put it up to the camera like that, uh, to her eyes, and uh, it said on there, here's what I wrote on there, C-spot run. And I put it right there in front of her. I said, can you read that? And she says, C-spot run. Wow. And she started crying. She wow. says, I haven't, I haven't read in three years. I can't read anything in three years, and now I can read. And I wrote another one. 
And I put it up there. I said, can you read that? And she says, God is good, is what she started reading. That spirit called stroke was causing her and keeping her from reading. There was nothing wrong with her. And she had a spirit that's that mind-binding spirit that's called the stroke that was there. And we set that woman free, and she was able to, to read, and she was able to, to use her mind and started to read again and become better and better and better and had contact with her, her husband. And her husband contacted me several years later, says she's doing better and that she's able to read and she's always progressed in her reading and all. But just to talk about this man right here on the screen, and he's saying, I have woke up with this here. Could the spirit of stroke casting out the spirit, can this be the mind binding spirit? Yeah, it can be the mind binding spirit, but guess what it probably is called? The stroke, the spirit behind the stroke, the mind binder. Mm. And that's how you address this. And uh, I'm not sure if you're battling that or not, or someone's going to be battling it, but God is trying to give you now revelation on how to deal with that mind binding spirit. Uh, that would be, be there. Greg, don't let me forget to pray for the mind binding spirit that some people would be having here tonight. Yep. And I got that North Carolina mind control right here in front of me. Pastor. Henry. Okay. So uh, back to the mind control in North Carolina. So I sat down and started praying with mind control. And we, we started going through uh, some things in the person's life. I said, tell me about it. So here's how we did mind control with her. We renounced mind control, so we don't want to have it anymore. We took. I said, you have any anointing oil? And all you people out here, right here now, you want to pray for mind control? First of all, here's the thing. You cannot be driving down the road. If you're driving down the road right now, you need to pull over. If you're listening to this on a replay, stop. You cannot do this driving down the road. If you're flying an airplane, do not listen to this. You know, <laughs> I tell people this, brother, but they laugh at me. Mm -hmm. I said the prayers that we're getting ready to pray are not like the prayers other pastors pray in this stuff. They believe in a number one prayer. But when we start praying, I don't know what it is. It's got to be some kind of anointing that goes with it. Is it. And then people will say, man, I'm so glad I wouldn't driving a car when you started praying over me. I said, that's what I've been trying to tell you. You cannot pray with this, listening to this, traveling down the road. And uh, the people are traveling down the road, they'll listen to it. They'll start throwing up going down the road. You don't want to be driving doing that. Mm, mm. It's a warning. Yes. I mean, I need to do a warning. Warning, do not be driving if you're listening to this. Do not be operating heavy equipment. <laughs> so, and then we start praying on this stuff. Get ready. I'm thinking of the garbage man story you told me, Pastor Henry. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> so anyway, we prayed for the woman there. Uh, we prayed for the woman at uh, in North Carolina. We're going to get back to her and how this thing came out of her. But I got contacted this week, uh, and I contacted a person that was uh, in Missouri. And um, as I talked with him, I said, brother, where are you at? He says, mm -hmm. uh, I'm in a truck. I said, no, you got to be more specific. <laughs> He says, I'm, in a, I'm driving a garbage truck. I said, well, are you on it or are you in it? He said, I'm driving it, and I'm sitting right behind uh, a policeman We're in, in traffic. I said, well, then you got to stop. you got to put it in park. So you can't be driving this here. So I prayed over him, <laughs> and I prayed over him for mind control and, and all of these things. He, was, he went to a denomination that did not believe in baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and all of that. So through mind control, we call that spirit of mind control out of him. He started manifesting there in the truck, uh, and <laughs> he's manifesting. And then at the end of it, uh, we prayed over him to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And he was a, of a denomination that did not believe in that, but he knew he wanted it. His pastor didn't believe in it, and they thought uh, Pentecostals were crazy. But at the end of the conversation we had with him, while he's still stuck in traffic, sitting behind the police with his car parked, I said, now raise your hands up, brother. So he raised his hands up in his truck there and in the garbage truck, in the garbage truck, God baptized him in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues wow. and del delivered him from a spirit of mind control wow. sitting right there. So it's just amazing at what God's doing. That's all glory to Jesus. That's you right. Know. Pastor Henry. <laughs> all glory to Jesus right yep. there at the garbage truck. God filled him up with a baptism in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. <laughs> so back to the woman. 
Girl. In North Carolina, we started praying over her, and this is what we did. We called that spirit of mind control out. I said, come up and come out of her. And when, you know, of course, we cut it off the top of the head, and it came up. She, she said the same thing. She said, there's something happening in my stomach. It's coming up my chest right here. And she said, it's cold. She said, just like you said, it's cold. And she started going, she started breathing. Oh, I said, come up, breathe it out. I said, come on out, mind control. Come on out, mind control, as it started coming out. She says, it feels like a cold air coming up and coming out. Now, it doesn't have to be like that. I'm just telling what she says. So she feels that like that. And then, then this started. I'm on the other end of the phone. I start hearing this. Oh, oh. This thing starts roaring as this thing's coming out. And it went on and on and on as we call that spirit of mind control out. And then at the end of it, she'd go, oh, and it, this spirit would come out. So some of them come out roaring, making sound. I want one of you to make a sound right now and take air in. Do it. You can do it like that. But I'm talking about out. You know, all your sound that you make normally is going out is what it does. So that's how the spirit comes out uh, from her. So, and, and, and another thing, as we deal with mind control here tonight, uh, we're going to, you know, pray over some people and pray over, uh, just release a general prayer is that the devil sends them out two by two, just like God does. That's a, that is a, that is a spiritual principle, not a godly principle. We know that God sends them out two by two, but that, and that's a, on the, on God's side of it. But the devil sends them out two by two. So that is a spiritual principle. The devil can do it and God can do it. And the devil sends out mind control and the past. They are wrapped together. These two spirits are. Because if the devil can keep you always focused on the past, then you will not live into the future. And your your future will be your past. That's very good, Pastor Henry. Hey, Pastor Henry, we got a question from C. Springs Ott. Could okay. you? Thank you, Pastor Henry. Let me see if I can do it right here. I see her. Is that it right there? I have the Holy Spirit for sure, but also have a spirit that tries to drag me down and remind me of negative things. Yes, mind control. Mm-hmm. Yes, I believe it is mind control. And it would be the past. Um, uh, negative things. Must be mind control, maybe. Yes, I would say mind control. So if you want to get prayer tonight, we're going to do it all together uh, on this here. And one other thing is, as we're, as we're talking about this here, don't let me forget about the past. The past, that spirit called the past is very powerful. And he drags, you, he drags your past into your future, so you live out of your past. Now, the, the this information and all that we're talking about are things that God has showed us, not only just show us but it actually works out in deliverance and that's why we have such success in deliverance and setting people free is because it's a progressive step that you take people through so i'm getting ready to take you through some deliverance from mind control but many times what you're going to hear me say as we do this here that i forgive every person who's ever harmed me or hurt me so we're dealing with unforgiveness uh i want all i and and i don't want to be bitter in my life you could have a spirit of bitterness and I don't want to, and I'm not a stubborn person. And then we attack mind control. And then we get that spirit out of mind control. And then as soon as we deal with mind control, we always deal at the same time with the past. And I want you to think about mind control. And some of you right now, first grade, second grade, third grade in your life, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, all the things that happened. And at that time, some of you won't even go to a uh, class reunion. You don't want to talk about what happened in school. You just want to forget it. Some people it was good. Some people it wasn't. But the past, the devil uses the past. So many people are dealing with uh, hurt and deep hurt from uh, from the uh, church world. And see, what most ministers do, here's what they will do. I want, you to, I want you to think about what I'm telling you, is that a pastor will deal with a sermon that's called church hurt. Uh, and people will, they'll come up there and get prayed for, uh, inner healing for church hurt or something like that. Or they may even believe in casting a spirit out that's called church hurt. But what they don't realize is that church hurt leaves 
and next week or a few days later, they're still still dealing with church hurt. Mm-hmm. You can tell they're still dealing with it because they keep talking about it all the time. That's how you know what's in control of your mind. What do you talk about? And that is, and I'm gonna tell you what's in control with Pastor Henry is deliverance. I love, I love talking about deliverance. Don't I, Greg? Oh, you love it, Pastor Henry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I love talking about deliverance. And um, what is Sister Schaefer saying? Is she laughing? On here, y'all see that? Oh, here it is. I don't know when she's laughing, but she's laughing at something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, y'all need to pray for Sister Shaper. She's a sweetheart. All right. Somebody said this is good stuff. Somebody can tell me, is this good stuff or not? We just like talking about it, trying to educate everybody. We're going to pray over everybody. Hey, Pastor Henry, just before you do a deliverance like this, what should people do to prepare now? Well, that's what we're trying to do is get them ready. Um, Try to get them ready. Uh, And see, this one here says, I need deliverance from smoking cigarettes addiction. So that can all be in your mind. Mind control, mind control spirit can be over all of this here. Um, oh, here's what she said. <laughs> I am manifesting right now. My hands are shaking really bad. I'm uncomfortable. Funny noise is coming out of my mouth. It's not me. All right, you hear me? The one that's in Candia, Hercules. I don't know where you're at from Candia. I bind the strong man that's in Candia. You hear me? Mind control. You come out of that woman now. Come on out of Candia. Out, out. Get out of that body. I bind the strong man that's in Candia right now. Come on out. Oh, uh, Jesse. I'm sorry, Jesse. Jesse told me, he said, I'm not a man. Well, you know, that's them gender neutral names, you know. <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell what they are, so I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about that clumsiness, all of this. The one that's, that's uh, messing with Candia, come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Manifesting real bad, funny noise coming out of the mouth. It's not me. That's right. That's that mind control. I think we need to get on to casting these demons out, brother. They, they're they just talking about them. They start manifesting. Yep. I'm ready uh, with you. God so help. everybody, I want you to know how much I love you and everything. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here, but uh, God's going to set some people free. You get you talk about this session right here. You talk about mind control. It's one of the most it's one of the most prevalent it is is prevalent in the whole body of Christ. Everybody has it. Some people say, well, I don't believe I have it. Well, you just keep sitting here. Or I say this here, come come to University Parkway. Call me on the phone. We'll see. Um, some people say, well, I do it online. I didn't manifest. I didn't have anything. Listen here, one-on-one, in-person, one-on-one is the best deliverance. One-on-one, in-person is the best. We do it over the line like this here. We can. We get as many people as we can. You need to seek out us at University Parkway here in Aiken. Go to the upcog.org. You can find out where we're at and uh, watch our services and everything because we do a lot of it. We do mass deliverance. Greg Locke, he's a good friend of mine that they're in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. If you can't come here, you can need to go there. Uh, there's a lot of other deliverance ministers, a lot of demons to cast out. I thank God for the for the ministry, though, that he's given us a weighty ministry, but we like doing it. All right, so let's talk about mind control. Everybody, y'all ready? We're going to do it. In the name of Jesus, do it in for the name me, Greg. Of Jesus. Uh, and hey, I'm gonna tell everybody what they need to do. If you got any anointing oil, get you some anointing oil. Get you some anointing oil. If you don't have anointing oil, uh, all you need to get you some uh, some olive oil. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you get motor oil. Get get some oil. Oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. So we're gonna take some anointing oil, and uh, it, you just get virgin olive oil. And I'm gonna tell you this here: if you want uh, anointing oil. Uh, and you want to use it in ministry for people or not, do not get scented oil. Scented oil sometimes is very, uh, 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 has a pugnant smell. It can be offensive. Uh, some people can't handle the smells. It's just like, whoo, it smell. I can't, that, 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 the frankincense and the myrrh and all that stuff that's mixed into it. Nope, can't have none of that oil. Get the virgin olive oil. It has no smell to it or very, you know, anything like that. And you just, Put it on your hands, and uh, it's not going to leave a scent on them. Uh, that's going to be uh, obtuse or anything like that. So here we go. Here we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to get some olive oil because we're going to anoint the head of uh, where mind control is. We're going to anoint the front, the back, and the sides of the head. And we're going to anoint right here at the very top where the tooth is. Mm-hmm. This is I'm telling you, some will tell you this is unnecessary. 
and I'm going to say this here, that's their channel, and that's the way they teach it. I teach what the Lord spoke to me and showed me. And many of these techniques that I'm telling you are in John Eckhart's books, Great Man of God of Deliverance. And there were times when I was dealing with the spirits, God says, go get the book. And I would read the section he's already written about. And the anointing oil is what causes the enemy to lose his yoke bearing strength. When he grips, it's not slippery. It destroys his yoke that he has. That's what God's word says. So what we're going to do, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this. Who says this is the sword of the spirit right here? Who says that's a sword? His word. I, I word see. Sword. God's word is like a sword. It's like a hammer, too, and it's like fire. It's a lot of stuff. But mm -hmm. in the spirit realm that we're going to use it as, we're going to use it as a sword. And what I do is I take the sword when we get to a point we're gonna, where the tentacles are at, wrapped around at, we're going to take the, the sword and cut the tentacles off all the way around the top of the person's head. Please don't laugh at me. This works. <laughs> I know God does use his foolish things. He said that's a sword. He said that this right here would destroy the yoke. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it don't make no sense. It's all done by faith, everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why people don't do it. You know why they don't do it? They don't have any faith. Faith, yeah. Got to have faith. Operate in faith. Do it in faith. So we're going to take it after we anoint him and where the tooth is. We're going to take the sword of the spirit. We're going to cut his tentacles off all the way around. And we're going to cut them up. You're going to hear me say we cut them up to the hub, right up to the hub. And the thing is, is that if you if you just nip them down very low, a octopus has the ability to regenerate the his arms. They grow back. That's why when you go to a deliverance minister, uh, you go to the pastor and he prays over church hurt, and he nips at the bottom a little bit, and he doesn't get mind control. That's right. See, mind control is over church hurt, and he deals with my, he deals with uh church hurt on one of the tentacles of a rejection or a victim mentality is what it's under a victim mentality group. And he nips at the bottom of that thing. And, and he prays over church hurt for it to leave something leaves. But just as soon as you walk out the door, I'm finishing up my thought from a while ago, two or three days later, all of a sudden the arm grows back. He lets church hurt right back in because he didn't get mind control. Wow. Mind control was over it. Yeah. Does that make sense? So the point yeah. is, the point is a lot of people are doing deliverance and they're nipping at the tips of these different areas and they're not getting to mind control and cutting that whole hub off and stripping all those demons that are in that mind control that they're over. And so next thing you know, a week or so later, they come right back in because the arm grows right back and the people are, are worse shape than they were when they began. So we're going to deal with mind control. Mm -hmm. And we're going to deal with him by cutting the hub off, stripping the, stripping his uh, tentacles off out of your mind, your will, your emotions, all of those kind of things. And then we're going to deal with a thing that is called the past. So, Greg, you're going to be the one that kind of voices what I'm doing to all the people. And mm -hmm. we're going to say, I renounce the past. I don't want you no more. I come out of agreement with the past. I'm not going to think about you no more. And then we're going to call the past, say, come out past and call that demon out in the name of Jesus. So that's what we're going to do here. That's Candia Hercules right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Is everybody ready? Everybody. So somebody says I'm skipping. I'm skipping the sunset tonight. I don't want to miss this. Thank you so much. Wow. God bless. We're going to do this here in Jesus name. Uh, here's what uh, Dana, that's my treasurer at the church, said. I said, I love deliverance. She said, he lo he, yes, he loves it. That's all we talk about all the you, way down. You have some Ready? good people at your church, uh, Pastor Henry. Yes, we do. Yeah. Oh, so, pal, hey, look, give me one more. I'm ready. We're getting started. I got one more ready coming up here. I'm ready. I got pilot. Uh, Christy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One ready. more eye ready for Pastor Henry. Yeah, one more eye ready. Get this coffee on down us right here. 
Thank you, Jesus. Make sure you share this with everybody. Oh, look at this. I got our rating. Lisa Pay. Okay, coming now. P P P P A P A. Oh, I'm ready. Iris Rose says I'm ready. <laughs> Take it there for a moment, Greg, for we get ready. And once again, you're listening to Deliverance with Pastor Henry. And boy, am I really looking forward to the tonight. And uh, I'm sure our, your presence here tonight on the network, I believe it brings a smile to God's heart. So once again, you're here for a reason. You know, we're all in this, the army of God. And pay attention. I'm sensing in my spirit to pay attention because this is going to be a wonderful night of healing. Yeah, the, uh, the mind games, that the malicious mind games that the enemy uses, he tells you that nobody loves you, nobody cares about you. Uh, we talk about the mind-binding spirits. We're going to talk about uh, mind-binding, um, fuzzy-minded, anything with double-minded, mm -hmm. um, double-minded spirits. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of things that they're over with. We're talking about the mind, um, double-minded um, I can't remember. Anybody say, I can't remember. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, memory loss. Um, <clears throat> the uh, fuzzy, did I say fuzzy minded? I did. Fuzzy minded. Yeah. Um, um, mental confusion. You ready? Mental confusion. And that's just regular confusion. People go, why, why, why am I? Or someone will stutter right before they think the stuttering mm -hmm. spirit what mm -hmm. makes a person stutter right before they think mm -hmm. they stutter mental stutter they stutter hey pastor henry uh, a message for the men you know tonight anyways it appears that there's more women but if we can let go of our pride and it's not a weakness to say we need help you're on your way to freedom you know That's there's true. nothing like uh, humbling ourselves and being uh, vulnerable a bit pastor henry that's right. I got bona fide truth on here, too. He's on there. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Bona fide. Yeah, he's a good friend of ours. God bless bona fide and Chris. All the way from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Okay, y'all ready? We're going to do it. This is how we're going to do the process. You ready, Greg? All set, Pastor. Well, let me start. In the name of Jesus, I bind the strong man that is in every person who was listening, who was part of the program. We bind the strong man in every person right now. You hear me, strong man? You're weak. You're weak. You are defeated in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I do not come to you in my own name. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you hear me, my control. You are not going home with these people tonight. You understand me? You're not going home with them tonight, but you're coming out of them tonight is the last night and this body controlling these people. Mm -hmm. And as we get ready to begin, let's tell everybody, when you start to manifest the spirit, you may feel it grip your head, move around on your head. That's demonic manifestation. And that's normal. What we're looking for is the spirit comes out your airways. You may cough, you may sneeze, you may burp, you may cry, you may pass gas, uh, you may yell, you may scream. Um, and, and they come out your airways. So we're looking for that exhaling of air, coughing, singing, whistling. I don't care how it is, but it comes out your body. Some people tremble and shake. The trembling and shaking is not the spirit coming out. It's manifesting. But when you start to breathe, when you start to breathe, and I'm going to tell you, some people are going to sigh. Like they're, they're going to be sires. Like I said, sigh. That spirit rides your breath out. It may start getting cold. Come on out or sigh that breath. Take a deep breath. That spirit will ride that breath out in the name of Jesus. You may even get woozy headed. Look, as that spirit's coming out, you may get woozy headed. The woozy headed is just him turning loose and he's coming out. You're separating out of your mind, your will, and your emotions uh, and things like that as that spirit comes out. So I want to kind of educate you on what we expect to see. Some people will scream. When this spirit comes out, some people roar. They roar. They scream. Uh, and some people pass out. That's why I say you don't want to be driving. Uh, you don't want to be sitting up in a deer stand listening to this. I can tell you that. Uh, if you are, you need to be make sure that you are strapped in for the ride. It's getting ready to happen. Somebody's, I am a demon terrorist, by the way. I want everybody to know that. 
I am Pastor Henry Schaefer, a demon terrorist. Uh, yeah, look here. Uh, forgetfulness. I love it. Forgetfulness. I can't remember. Confusion. Uh, dementia is one. Mm. Dementia is one as well. Anything to do with the mind. That's the spirits we're calling it. The mind-binding spirit. When that mind binds, you can't think like you should. You get locked up in the head. You can't thought. Mental confusion. Mental torment. Uh, mental torment. The other one is, a um, friend's got it, fuzzy-minded. She did good on that. Mm -hmm. Fuzzy-minded. The other one is um, mental torment. And we're going to talk spiritual. Y'all ready? Spiritual torment in the mind as he uses it in the mind. Mm -hmm. These are different ones that we've got. Um, she says this here. Is there any reason that you should not be alone while going through online deliverance? Well, most of the time people don't have somebody with them, but the, here's what I tell you is that um, sit down, get you in a chair, get your Bible, sit there with you. Just listen, turn your phone on, just listen. Let's talk through it. Make sure you're sitting down, lying down, whatever you're going to do. But don't be playing golf, flying an airplane, <laughs> operating equipment. You don't want to do, don't be cooking. If you're cooking right now, you turn that stove off. Turn that handle away from you on the pot, on the pan. Turn it away from you so you don't flip on it or something, uh, anything like that. Tammy, uh, it's always good to hear from Tammy. She's come to the church several times. Thank you for telling me that, Tammy. And I hope I get to see you in Tennessee next week. Uh, she wants me to call out addiction, too. Uh, condemnation. You want me to do con spiritual condemnation? We'll do that. So, and here's what happens, everybody. Um, scattered, scattered brain. Scattered thought and foggy mind sometimes. Wow. They're coming in now, Pastor Henry. Yep. This is what they are right here. Y'all are doing good. And they have certain names. Scattered thoughts. Foggy mind. Y'all doing good. Each one can be specific. A spirit will take on the name. And what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that we break the word curse. <clears throat> Procrastination. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, I am working on a book. Y'all got to make sure that I push that thing through. Oh, yeah. Help me. Oh, we'll help you, Pastor Henry. Everybody's got to tell me you got to push this thing through, Pastor. I've yeah. got so I got so much nuggets and all these things that I've learned. I just got to put it together and get this thing done. Um, and it's not stuff I've read out of other people's stuff. It's stuff that Lord showed me about things. So everybody ready? Oh, you know, you when you're saying this here, Lisa, let me put this up. Uh, misinterpreting uh, words you heard. You know what that is? That is, um, we're going to call it the mind twisting. You can you can hear that. That's Leviathan. Leviathan, mm -hmm. tw Leviathan twists the words that you heard. That what ca what came what came out, um, what came out is um, uh, not what I said. That's not what I said. And you can do that a lot with your with your wife and everything. Hey, I want to tell you something else while we're getting ready, everybody. Um, I want to, I want, and you're talking about it twisting the words. I'm getting ready to pray here, but I'm going to tell y'all about a spirit the Lord showed me about a a spirit that makes you hate the sound of your wife's or husband's voice. I believe it. There is a spirit that makes you hate the sound of your wife's voice or your husband's voice and it makes it sour in their ears when they hear it and that is a a, a spirit that will cause many divorces uh, that we will deal with uh, in that uh, what did she say here <clears throat> thanks pastor i know it's important that you and we make sure we are communicating with you and Greg and letting you know that 
if there are signs of manifestation, oh yeah, there you go, that you will walk us through what's happening. Yeah. So what needs to happen is that when you start to feel something in your body, what you're feeling in your body, you type it in down here. Let me know what's taking place and we can target that. If you feel something coming up, what have you, it's coming up or I'm shaking or I'm coughing. Say I'm coughing, I'm sneezing, I'm burping. We say, come on out. That's right. Come on out uh, in the name of Jesus. Okay. Are, is everybody ready, Greg? Now, well, see, see, see all of these. Um, yeah. Sea Springs. Yeah. Can't twisting the words be associated with connected to having a po post. Oh, yeah. Concussion. Sure. Yeah. A concussion. Yeah. A spirit can come in. Sure can. Everybody ready? All set, Pastor okay, Henry. So let's do it. So you're going to do it, Greg, for me? So in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I bind the strong man that's in every person here. I bind the strong man that's in every person here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So let, let me just take it for a moment. Uh, this one here, blessed light. I start feeling something walking in my head. Oh, that's good stuff right there. Um, and uh, in the name of Jesus, I bind the strong. Let me just say it, Greg. In the name of Jesus, I bind the strong man that's in every person. You hear me? You're bound. You're bound. I know we're going over this again. You're bound in the name of Jesus. You have no authority here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are defeated in the name of Jesus. You have no authority over us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We bind you now in the name of Jesus. Say this here. Say, Greg, uh, say do this here, Greg. Say, I forgive. I forgive all those who's ever harmed me or hurt me. All those who ever harmed me or hurt me. Everybody needs to say it. I forgive. I forgive the hurt. The hurt that they have that has happened in my life. That has happened in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I forgive. I forgive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, uh, Say, in the name of Jesus, I release the person. In the name of Jesus, I release the person. From bitterness. From bitterness. I am not a bitter person. I am not a bitter person. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say this here. Say, I am not stubborn. I am not stubborn. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All you got to do, Lord. All you got to do, Lord. Is tell me what to do. Is tell me what to do. And I will do it. And I will do it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Okay. So now we're going to get ready to do my control. You ready? I'm going to call, say this here, say Greg, say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I come against, I come against mind control, mind control. I don't want you no more. I don't want you no more. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you influencing my thoughts influencing my thoughts. I come out of agreement with you. I come out of agreement with you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay, you ready? Now let me just call up mind control. I'm calling up mind control on every person who's watching me. Come on up here, mind control. Come on up. Mind control. Come on up, mind control. Get on up here. Come on up, mind control, and the people who are watching from all across the United States and everywhere. Come on up, mind control. Get up here. Come on up in the name of Jesus. You ready, Greg? All set. Because now I'm calling up mind control, but Greg is going to be saying it, and you need to say it, just like I'm talking to mind control through you. Come on up here, mind control. You ready, Greg? Mm hmm Say, I mind control. Everybody say it. I mind I control. I mind control. Give up my right. Give up my rights. To this body. To this body. And I go now. And I go now. To the pit. To the pit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are right, you hear me, mind control? I take the anointing on. And I anoint the front. I anoint the front. Do it, Greg. Do it like you. I anoint the front. I the, back, the back. The back. The sides. The sides. Of the head. Of the head. Right here on the very top where the tooth is. Right on the very top where the tooth is. I anoint. I anoint where your tooth is now in the name of Jesus. I anoint where your tooth is now in the name of Jesus. I take the sword of the Spirit. I take the sword of the Spirit. And I cut your tentacles off. I cut your tentacles off. All the way around. All the way around. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Up to the hub. Up to the hub. Up to the hub of your body. Up to the hub of your body. And I take your tentacles now. I take your tentacles now. And I pull them. I pull them. Out of your mind, out of your will, and the emotion. Out of your will and out of your emotions. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You hear me, mind control, and I take you at the very your top where your body is and your tooth is, and I pull you off the top of their head now in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Say, I mind control. I mind control. Give up my right. Give up my right. To this body. To this body. And I go to the pit. And I go to the pit. Come on out, mind control. There you go. Come on out of his body. Come out of these people. Come out of God's people. Out. 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 All the way to that body. Come on. You can't have them no more. Out. Out. Come out now. Come out of their mind. Come out of their will. Come out of their emotions. Come out. You cannot have them no more. Come out, mind control. I don't come to you in my own name. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out, mind control. I want you to breathe, everybody. Take your breath. There you go. Come out, mind control. There it is. Come on out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. One's burping. Come on out. One's yawning. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, mind control. Come out. Come out. You can't have them no more. You may yawn. That's a sign of deliverance. Come out. Come out of God's people. Come out, mind control. All the way to that body. Come out. Come out now. Get out of that body. You cannot have them no more. You are an invader. You are a trespasser. You cannot have them anymore. Come on out. Come out of that body. Come out now. Out. Out. All that yawning, all that burping, come on out. Come out of that body. Out, mind control. Come out, mind control. Out. Out. You might get fuzzy-minded, but, I mean, you might get uh, uh, woozy-headed. Come on out, mind control. Out. Out. Out of that body. Come out. You are an invader. You have been tormenting God's people for all these years. You've been influencing their thoughts and their minds. Now, come out. Come out all the way to that body. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. You cannot have them no more. Up and out of that body. Out. Out, mind control. All who call upon the name of Jesus shall be delivered. There shall be deliverance in Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And there shall be deliverance in the remnant whom the God shall call. Now come out. I'm breathing hard and blowing also. Just let it come. Just let it come up and out. You may even feel, look here. Slow breathing, you may feel it. You may feel it, a cold breath come right on out. It'll be cool coming out. Yawning and dizzy. That's right, look here. She's very dizzy. Just be real careful. Come on out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, mind control. Come out in the name of Jesus. You cannot have them no more. Out. Now, here we go. You hear me, you mind-binding spirits? Come on out. Come out of God's people. You hear me, mind control over the mind-binding? Out. Out. Come out, the one that causes the stroke. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. All the way to that body. Come out. Out in the name of Jesus. Come out, you mind-binding spirit. Out. Just breathe it out. Here it comes. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, you mind-binding spirit. Out. The one that causes the stroke. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. You cannot have them no more. You are an invader. You are a trespasser. Come out. Come out. The one that has scattered thoughts. My my thoughts are scattered, and they're not in alignment. Come out. Scattered thoughts. Come out. Come out. Scattered thoughts. Come on. They come from everywhere. My thoughts are all over the place. Come out. Scattered thoughts. Out. Out. Out in the name of Jesus. Come on out. That mind-binding spirits. Come out. Look at this one here. One says, I get in a film over the eyes. That's right. You know what's happening? When you're saying you're getting the film over your eyes, that spirit is coming up, looking out your eyes. Wow. Say, come out. The one that's causing the film, the the um, the uh, the film over the eyes. Come on out, out of Jesse. Come out. Come on out of her eyes now. Out, out, out. In the name of Jesus, the one that stops them from memorizing scripture. That's a good one, Pastor. Henry. Come on out. The spirit that stops memorizing scripture. Out. Out, all the way to that body. Come on, you can't have it no more. You cannot have us no more. Come out. 
Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. Up and out of that body. Come out. Get out of that neck. Come on out. Come out, mind control. Out you go. You cannot have them no more. Out. I want that fuzzy-minded. Come out, fuzzy-minded. Come out, the fuzzy-minded spirit. I can't remember. Come out, fuzzy-minded. Come out. You mind control. Now, this spirit mind control is over things in the mind. He controls all the other areas like lust and fornication and hurt and deep hurt and abandonment and all of these victim mentalities or critical spirits or over all the fears and all of this stuff. But mind control controls how you think about all these things. We're getting mind control first. Come on. Come on out in the name of Jesus. Get out. Just breathe, uh, breathe, Den uh, Denise. Breathe. Just breathe out slow. Come out of them ears. You may even feel pressure in your ears. Come out. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. All the way in the name of um, mind control as far as not wanting to share a testimony. Come out. Come out, mind control. Fear of sharing a testimony. Out. Come on out that body. Come on out. I want the fuzzy-minded. You know what I'm talking about. I don't cast enough of them demons out. Everything's fuzzy. I can't remember. It's just fuzzy-minded right now. Say to everybody, say, I break the word curse. I break the word curse. I spoke over myself. That I spoke over myself. That I was fuzzy-minded. That I was fuzzy-minded. And I cannot remember. And I cannot remember. There you go. Come on out in the name of Jesus. Come on out, fuzzy-minded. Out. Out, out, out. I want the spirit that's called double-mindedness. Come out, double-mindedness. Out. Come out of God's people now. You double-minded demon, come out. Out of that body. All the way out of that body. Come on out. We'll take a, uh, take a slow breath, everybody. Get on it. Say, get out of me, you double-minded spirit. Come out. Come out. I'm single-minded, not double-minded. Come out. Come out. All the way. I want that one that causes that split personality. Come out, double-mindedness. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Come out now. All the way. You are. Oh, C. Spring said I went deaf for, for a minute. That's right. Come on out, double-mindedness. Come out. Come out of C. Spring. Arts, come out. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out. Come out, mind control. Mind control and double-mindedness. Come out. The one that says, that makes you say, I can't remember spirit. Come out. I can't remember. Out. Out. Come on out. Come out. I can't remember. One that says, I can't remember. Come out of that body. Come out now. I cannot remember. Come out. Up and out. Breathe it out slow, everybody. I can't remember. All the way to that body. This is a demon called mind control. Come out. You cannot have God's people no more. Come up and out of that body. I want the one that says I'm a scattered brain. Come out. Scattered brain. Someone said you were a scattered brain. You were scattered. Come out. Come on out. This one here is stuttering right here. Come on out. The one that makes them stutter. Come out. Hard to speak. Come out. The one that makes them stutter right before they speak. Come on out, mind control. Out. 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 Out in the name of Jesus. Come out of that body. Come out. Everybody breathe. You breathe this thing at you, everybody. Slow breathing. If you got a cough, look here. Let me tell you what they have. They have the spirits have little hands right here. They'll lock up right here in your throat, and you got to cough them out. <coughs> it dislodges them. Come out. Come out. The one that's in the film in the eyes, come out. Come out. Come out of Jesse. Out. Out. Mm -hmm. Up and out of that body. All the way to that body. Come on. The one that says, I cannot remember. The scattered brain. Out. You know I love setting God's people free. That's what Jesus came and died for. Jesus came to set his people free. These people right here are going to have a new renewed mind in the name of Jesus. This is how you're renewing your mind, everybody, getting the old out first. Come out. This is your first step right here. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. I want the spirit called dementia. Come out. Dementia. Come out. Dementia. Come out. Come out. Dementia. Spirits of dementia, come on out. Come out. Come out now. That's the eyes of the octopus right there. Come on out. Come on out of Candia, Hercules. Come out. All the way to that body. Up and out. 
come out. Oh, this one here is good. She's feeling cold. That's good. That's deep down in beneath. Come out of Denise. Mm -hmm. Come out of Denise Marks now. Come on out. Mm -hmm. Come out, mind control, up and out of that body. Out. Out. Come out of the cold waters of the soul. Come out. The deep waters. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. I, and I, I let people know that if if I call you about deliverance, this is what I'm going to do right here. We're going to take you through deliverance. I'm going to spend hours with you, and this is exactly what I'm going to do. Come out. Mm -hmm. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. 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 Come out of that body. Come out. I want all spirits of dementia out. All the way out. When the spirit called forgetfulness, I'm forgetful. Come out. Say, I break the word curse that says I am forgetful. Say it. I break, I break the word curse that says no. I am forgetful. That says I am forgetful. That's right. Come on out. Come out now. Come out now. The one that says I am forgetful, come out. That spirit. You said all the time. I am forgetful. Let's go out. 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 Come out now. There you go. Come on out. The one that's heavy on the shoulders, come out. In the name of come Jesus. Out of that body. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Out of that body. Up and out. I feel something bless. Uh, I feel something heavy on the shoulder. Come out of blessed life. Let's go out off that shoulder. I cut your tentacles. Here we go. I take the, the hammer of God's word and I crush those tentacles. You hear me? I crush those tentacles. I cut your tentacles off. You hear me? Mind control. And I chop them up. And I'm going to feed them up to the fish of the sea. Oh, I'm going to feed them up to the fish of the sea. Come on out. Leaking tears. That's good because you can cry them out. That's good. Come on out all the way. And they'll just start running out all by yourself. Come on out. Mm -hmm. Come out in the name of Jesus. Everybody, don't get so quick to get free. Just let it. Let them. These are things that are in your life that has this spirit has tormented God's people. And they're not going to get, they're not going to fulfill their destiny if they get rid of this thing. Remember, everybody has it. All the children have it. All the pastors have it. All the leaders have it. They got to go through mind control. And our country is set up right through mind control. These demons are everywhere. Come out, mind control. Come out. Come out. Forgetfulness. Come out. Out of that body. In the name of Jesus. Out of that body. The scattered brain. Out. The spirits of condemnation come out. I'm just putting that one in there, but come on out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. Up and out of that body in Jesus' name. I don't come to you in my own name. I come to you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, he said, these signs, Mark 16, 17, these signs would follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. I want memory loss. Come out, memory loss. The spirit that causes memory loss. Come out. Come out, memory loss. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. 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 Come out, memory loss. Up and out. 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 All the way to that body. Come on. Out. Memory loss. Out. I want the spirit that causes the mental procrastination. Come out, procrastination. Come out, procrastination. Out. Jesus. Out. Out. Out of that body. Cannot have them no more. Greg, say, Pastor Henry. Pastor Henry. Is a demon terrorist. Is a demon terrorist. That's right. Come on out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of God's people. You can't have them no more. Out. All pastors need this. Send this to your pastor. Hey, pastor says you need it. If you're going to stand up and preach to me, I don't want you to preach to me with a mind control demon sitting on top of your head. Come on out. I want the one that causes mental confusion. Mental confusion. Come on out. Mental confusion. Out. The spirit that causes mental confusion. Come out. Come out. The one that causes negative thinking. Come on out. Come on out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Negative thinking. The spirit become negative thinking. Come out. All you want to talk about is the negative things. Come out. Come out. Negative thinking. Come out. Mental confusion. Come out now. Out. 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 
out all the way to this body. Come out. Woo. Well, you know God's people are getting free. You're going to go to church tomorrow, and you're going to be saying, this is something else. Mm -hmm. Come mm -hmm. out. Mental confusion. Out. Mental torment. Come on out. Come out. Mental torment. Come out. I want mental torment spirits. Out. Mentally torn. I mean, all those uh, abusive words that people spoke, all that mental torment the devil has put you through, through your spouse, through your husband, through your friends. Come out mental torment. Come out mentally tormented. Come on out. Come out. Come out of God's people. Out. Out. All that mental torment. Come on out. Out now. Come out. Come out. You cannot have them no more. Get out of that body. Out. I want the spirit that makes you stutter right before you speak. Your thoughts are not there. It stands between you and your thought. Come out. The spirit that stutters, come out. The, the stuttering spirit. Uh, 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 uh. Come out. You're afraid. Uh, uh. Come out. Come out. You just can't get your thoughts together. Come on out. Come out. Out in the name of Jesus. Out you go. Out. Breathe that thing up and out. It come right out of that stomach. Come out. Get out in the name of Jesus. I want confusion. In the name of Jesus. Come out, confusion. Out. Out. Come out, confusion. Come out, confusion. Out. And everybody let me know what you're feeling there, everybody. Come on out. Mental confusion. Out. Hey, Pastor, this is just, hey, go ahead, brother. Hey, Pastor Henry, I just had an experience a few moments ago. Uh, the window to my right, it sounded like it was trying to open. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, in the name of Jesus, get out of that window. In the name of Jesus, get out of this house. Oh, yeah. you know, hey, you know, you know what that is? No, Pastor Henry. Oh, I know what it is, y'all. You know what that is? Let's call it out. I want that paranoia. I want that paranoia. Come out, paranoia. It's all in your mind. That's what paranoia is. Come on out, paranoia. Oh, Come God. out of God's people. It'll make you think that window's trying to open, brother, and it's not. That's exactly what I heard, Pastor Henry. Come out, paranoia. Come out, paranoia. Out. You're making them afraid. Come out, out of all of God's people. Come out, paranoia. Out. Out. That's a mental spirit right there. Come on out. Come out, paranoia. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, paranoia. Out. Wow. Out. out. Is that crazy, brother? Wow. Breathe it, brother. I want you to breathe. You feel something? Yeah. Come out, paranoia. Come out, paranoia. They're trying to get your mind off of everything. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Are oh, y'all ready for this one here? I want the daydreamer. I want that daydreamer spirit. Come out, daydreamer. Come out, daydreamer. Let's go out. Out. Come out, daydreamer. Come out, the daydreaming spirit. Say, I break the word curse that was spoken over me as a child that said I was a daydreamer. Come out now. Come out now. There you go. Just that deep nausea. Just keep breathing out. Come on out. It's in your tummy right there. Come on out. Come out in the name of Jesus. While I'm doing it, I'll do the worry and anxiety. Come on out, worry and anxiety. Come on out, all worry. Come out, all anxiety, because it's all mental stuff. Come on out. Come on out, worry. Come on out, anxiety. Out. Out. I normally don't call that out in mind control, and I do it nowhere else, but I'll do it tonight because you wrote it there. Come out. Come out, mind control, worry. Mind control, anxiety. Out. In the name of Jesus. Come out of that body. All the way in the name of Jesus. Cannot have them no more. Out. 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 I want the daydreamer spirit. Come out, daydreamer. That spirit just makes them daydream. Just kind of like puts everything down, turns their head, and off into never, never land. Come out, daydreamer. Out. 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 All the way to that body. Come out. Jesus. Come out. All that confusion. All that negative thinking. The stutterer. I want spiritual torment. Spiritual torment. You're not going to make it. You're never going to make it. You're never going to make it. Come out. God's going to leave you behind. You're not going to be. Come out, you spiritual tormenting demon. Come out. Nobody listens to you. Come out, you spiritual torment. Come out. Come out. Out in the name of Jesus. The one that causes you not to memorize scripture. Come out. All the way to that body. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come on out, rejection. All spirits of rejection. Come out. In the name you know, of hey, you know what we're doing? We're winding up taking them through a whole deliverance is what we're doing. Wow. Come out in the name of Jesus. 
I mean, come out. Mental I'm torment. Come out. Mental rejection. Out. So I want everybody to do this here. Y'all ready? This is where we're at, everybody. You, you hanging in here with me? Do it, Greg. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come out of agreement. I come out of agreement. With the spirit. With the spirit. Call the past. Call the past. I don't want you no more. I don't want you no more. I want you to get out of me. I want you to get out of me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are right, you hear me past? Say it. Say, you hear me past? You hear me past. I don't want you no more. I don't want you no more. I want you to get out of me now. I want you to get out of me now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, I passed. I passed. Give up my right. Give up my right. I bind to myself. I bind to myself. Um, mind control. Mind control. And we go now to the pit. And we go now to the pit. Come on out, past. Come on out, past. I want the past to come out. The past that's in every person listening to me. The one that tells them it's not going to get any better. It's always going to be like this, and there's no need to try. You might as well just give up. Every church you go to is just like this. Every marriage winds up just like this. There's no need to pray. God's not listening. Nothing's going to happen. Come out past. It's the way it's always been. Come out past. Come out past. Come out past. Let's go out. Come out past. Come on out past. Remember, I taught, t teach you mind control in the past, sent out two by two. Mm -hmm. Come on out, mind control with the past. Out, out, Jesus. out. They don't need to go. They don't need to go to another church because always winds up just like this. Come out, past. They don't need to get connected to a pastor. It always winds up like this. Come out. They don't need to try another relationship. It's the way it always turns out. Come out, past. That's right. Come out. Come out. I've tried many times to make up with my with my spouse it always winds up bad come out past the one that says mom and dad don't love you and uh you try to make up they don't want to listen to you they don't need to try again come out past come out past today's a brand new day come on out past come on out in the name of jesus come out in the name of jesus all the way out that body come on out 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 all the way come out in the name of jesus come out that body out <laughs> out come out past have always failed they don't need to go to school I always seem to fail God said don't live in the past go to the future come out past come on out in the name of Jesus out out come out in the name of Jesus out there you go something in the ears they don't like it come out past the demon called the past come out I sever the past I cut your past out of the person now all your lies, take all your lies with them. Out. You tried to forgive that person, but they don't want to forgive and love you back. They don't need to do it again. Come on out, past. Come on out, past. That's the, that's the word I'm looking for right there. I feel light. That's deliverance right there. The that burden's Jesus. coming off. Come on out, past. Spirit, call the past. Out. Out. You can't have them no more. Out of that body. Come out, past. All that mental confusion, all that torment, all that dementia, fear of getting dementia. Parkinson's disease, come out. The spirit that caused Parkinson's disease, come out. Mm, Jesus. Come out. Out. The one that causes Parkinson's disease, come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. Come out all the way. There you go. Come on out of that body. Come out. The one that's shaking in Elaine's head, come on out. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. See, this one here says, I feel weird, something happened. There you go. Come on, let it call it out. Hey, I'm going to tell you this here. People want a three- or four-minute prayer or a two-minute prayer, and, then, and and they don't want to deal with this stuff. Listen, this is stuff that's been in you for years. Come out past. Come out. And I'll sit here with you as long as it takes. You hear me? Come out. Come out of God's people. Come out past. The one that's making a crystal shake, come out. The one that has that weird sensation, come out. When it's making them shake out, and they'll, sometimes if demons will shake their head, no, say, "You hear me? You are coming out. You hear me? Past in mind control. You are coming out. You're coming out, and you're not going to torment them with the past no more. The torment of the past come out. 
torment of the past come out. Come on out now. Out. Out that body. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Cannot have them no more. Torment of the past. Get out of that body. All your thoughts are tormenting thoughts. Come out. Come out. I'm not going to be healed. Come out. That's in your head. Come out. Come out. One nose is draining. Blow your nose, everybody. It's coming out that way. Blow your nose. Here's what's happening in your, in your sinuses. Well, Y'all listen to what I'm saying. In your sinuses, here's mind control. He sits right here. That's what we just dealt with. Mm -hmm. And he'll, he'll drain out of your sinuses right here. If you got to blow your nose, blow your nose. Come out. Come out. Come out of that body. Out. I feel something sharp pain on my left side to my chest rib. Come out. Come out out of Vilma. Come out. Come out of that body. Where are you from, Vilma? Come out. That sounds like a name from another country. Come out. In Come out all the way to that body. Come out. Up and out of that body. Feeling light on the head. That's what I like to hear. Woo. Come out of that body in the name of Jesus. Out. Spirits of the past. All that rejection. Rejection of the past. Come out of that body. Come on out of that body. It's such a shaper here. I want you to get one of those pieces of paper. Friend that has all that list. I'm going to take them all the way through. <laughs> Y'all, I'm going to go all the way with it. Well, I'm right here with you, Pastor Henry. Uh, we're going to do it all the way. Come on out, everybody. Yep. In the out name of Jesus. Out. 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 Come out of that body. In the name of Jesus. Out. I want all that rejection, all that self-rejection, all that hurt, deep hurt. Come out. Self-hatred. Out. Out. All that abandonment. Come out. Come out of that body. Come out, everybody. In Come out. Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. My face is not still. I like that. I've, I've seen that before. Come out. The one that's addiction to cigarettes. Come out. Samuel Reedy, tell me what kind is it. We'll call that we'll call that demon's name out. What kind do you go to the store and get? That's his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on out in the name of Jesus. Come out rejection. Come out hurt. Come out deep hurt. If y'all get Sister Schaefer to bring me one of them deliverance papers, I'll get all of them. In the name Come of Jesus. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. Out of that body. Come out. Rejection. Hurt. Deep hurt. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. All the way out of that body. Come out. Rejection. Hurt. Deep hurt. Come out. Out. Oh, that's it. He says, Paul Maul. Mm -hmm. Say this here, Greg. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I do not want. I do not Paul Maul. want. Paul Maul. Say, come out of me. Come out of me. I don't want you no more. I don't want you no more. Say, I, Paul Maul. I, Paul Maul. Give up my right. Give up my right. To this body. To this body. And I go now to the pit. And I go now to the pit. Come on out, Paul Maul. Come out, Paul Maul. Out. Out. All the way to that body. Woo. We can't have them no more. <laughs> Breathe it out. Samuel, ready? He's a he's not a Paul Mall smoker no more. Come on out. In the name of Jesus. Up and out. Breathe that thing out. Breathe that thing out all the way. Come on out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Woo. I tell you what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna stay with the mind control stuff, and then I'm gonna set up a a a a session that we're gonna do, and we're going to do addictions, spirits of addiction. One with just addictions. You hear me? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to deal with. I'm going to do that with the next one. How about that, everybody? Addictions. So if you're a smoker, you're a vapor, you're on drugs, you're taking things, and you want to get out of that addiction and everything, you tune in to the next one. Mm -hmm. We're going to do addictions. Come on out, mind control. Out. Out. And that's what mind control does. He controls you through your addictions. Come on out, mind control. Out. Out. All the way. Cannot have them no more. Come out of that body. All the past. The past in the name of Jesus. Past relationships, past mom and dad, what they said, what they did. I hate mom. I hate dad. There's no need for me to talk to him. Come out, past. You demon call the past. I don't want to I don't want to go outside. I don't want to go anywhere. I'm so fearful. Come out, past. Look what happened to me. I was raped. I don't want to get in another relationship. Come out, past. Mm -hmm. Come out, past. 
You're a demon called the past. The people of God is not to live in the past. In the past, in the name of Jesus, we move to the future. Come out. Forgetting those things which are behind, we press towards the prize of the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Come out, you demon called the past. Woo we somebody say this is crazy in the night. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How you doing there, brother? Doing good there, Pastor Thank Henry. You, Jesus. Oh, look at it here. Uh passing a lot of gas. There you go. Come on out. In Come on out, past. Jesus. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. There you go. The past. All the way to that body. Come out. The one that the gas is coming from the vagina. Out. Out. In the name of Jesus. Out. Come up and out. In the name out. Of Jesus. Never look back. Come on out. Come out. Jesus is the deliverer. I'm not the deliverer. Jesus is. We're just doing what he said do. He said, I, and I'm going to tell you this here. God said, get on the Internet. And you know how many years I've been doing this, Greg? Seven years. Seven years. Seven years doing this here. And just recently, God said, get on the Internet. Pat deliverance with Pastor Henry and just start calling demons out. And he said, my people need help. Come on out. The past. And the thing is, people come from all over the United States. They come every week, every Sunday, or they come. Somebody's going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to pray over somebody tomorrow. I don't know who it's going to be, but I'm going to pray over somebody who's coming from somewhere. I think they're coming from Florida driving up tonight. Hey. And we're going to sit down and take them through deliverance just like this. Come out. In the name of Jesus. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one deliverance. Come out. Hey, hey Pastor Henry, maybe uh, uh, at the end of the broadcast, can you give your online uh, where they can watch you online for church? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for online church tomorrow? Yes. It's, uh, the online church tomorrow, let's do Facebook. It's uh, UPCOG, U-P-C-O-G. That's University of Parkway Church of God. Um, and you can, we'll start streaming at 11 o'clock tomorrow. So look for us there. And then, of course, you can go to UPCOG uh, YouTube channel, U-P-C-O-G, University of Parkway Church of God. It's called UPCOG Live. And we'll be streaming right out of our sanctuary tomorrow. So tune in there. We're going to give you a message tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, we're going to take people through deliverance. But we're going to do more deliverance as well. So don't leave, everybody. We're going to pray over you right now. Mm -hmm. All that spirits of the past, come on out. Come out, mind control. You can't have them no more. Out. Out. Don't look back. Come out. Mm -hmm. Out. Jesus. All the way. You ready? Greg, I'm going to pray over him right now. Okay, Pastor. Ready? I pray over you now. I pray over every person. I pray the presence of Christ, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and the power of God would rest in those bodies over their mind, their will, and their emotions. Father, you would seal them now with the precious blood of Jesus, forbidding the demonic spirit to return in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do, setting people free in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Somebody say, that's it, UpCog Live at 11 a.m. tomorrow. That's oh, Let me put it on there, Velma. Here we go, right here. Right there. That's, that is so true, right there. I pray over every person who's listening here. I got a banner I'm going to put up across the bottom here. Mm -hmm. Hey, Pastor um, Henry, is that, a, yeah. is that supposed to be a C instead of a G? UpCog? U, yeah, UpCog, U-P-C-O-G. C-O-G, that's right. Yeah. U-P-C-O-G dot O-R-G. And that's the one that's supposed to be there. You could catch, Greg. U-P-C-O-G dot O-R-G. That's where we'll be at tomorrow, 11 a.m., Facebook and YouTube. I want to pray over people right now. Um, I want to pray over you. If you're here and you have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in another language, let's do this here. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any spirit. Any spirit. That tries to tell me. That tries to tell me. That tongues is of the devil. That tongues is of the devil. I want that spirit to come out of me. I want that spirit to come out of me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right, you hear me? Whatever spirit's talking to God's people that says tongues is of the devil, you came into them through some teaching, some denominational teaching. I counsel you out now, and I command you to come out of God's people. Tongues is of the devil. Come out. Come on out of God's people. Out. I counsel out your assignment now. Come out. Come out of their mind. Come out of the will. Come out of their emotions. Come out. Tongues is of the devil. Out. That's a, that's a, that's the, that is a, a uh, doctrine of a demon that says tongues is of the devil. Come out. Come on out. 
Come out now in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. Tongues is of the devil. Come out. Come out. Tongues is of the devil. Come out. You cannot have them no more. Come out of that body. Tongues is of the devil. Out. Out. Come out now. Come out now. All the way to that body. You cannot have them no more. Get up and out. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tongues is of the devil. Okay, you ready? Somebody ready to get prayed for. Say, man, I've been wanting to pray for the Holy Ghost for years. And years that have never received. This is going to be your night. So here's what's going to happen, Greg. Okay. You're going to be the one that does it. And y'all do it just like Greg does it. What's going to happen is I'm going to, I'm going to symbolically lay hands on you like this here. Right, Greg? We're going to raise our hands up just like this here. Okay. And, well, that's getting baptized in water. We're going to talk about getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in another language, talking in tongues. One is water, which shows a representation of going down an old person, coming up a new person. Water baptizing does not save you. It's an outward sign of an inward work. The bapti bapti baptism in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, is that he's on the outside, all of a sudden, he's going to come inside, and he's going to endue you with power like the first century saints, the first century apostles. Now, you'll have the enduing power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Acts 1-8, go to Jerusalem, upper room, you will be endued with power from on high. And on the day of Pentecost, that power fell. They came out speaking in tongues. Then those people who had already gotten that commission about going in, casting demons out, went out in renewed power and a different power to go cast demons out. Something happened to them in the upper room. So, in Jesus' name. So, you ready? Well, Here we sir. go. Yeah. Here we go. So, I'm ready to say, I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in another language with the evidence of speaking in another language. Now look at this here. Look at this here. If there's somebody who's watching me who's going to pray the prayer and wants it, say, someone say, I'm ready to receive. Why don't you go ahead and type it in? Say, I'm ready to receive the Holy I'm Ghost speaking in tongues. Say, you're going to do it just like this here. I'm ready to. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it right now. I'm ready to receive. Now you go. See, I just did that. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Oh, I can put it up there. See there yet? Deliverance. I'm ready to receive. Okay. Anybody ready to receive? Oh, look at that one there. I'm ready to receive. That's what I want to see right there. I'm ready to receive. I'm mm -hmm. ready to receive. That's what we want to see. That's your talk by faith. A fresh and feeling. Yeah, you can get a fresh and feeling of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Another, another fresh and feeling. You ready, Greg? Here we go. All set. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. See, you're already saved, but you need to be endued with power. You're empty. See, your head's empty. You, hear, you understand what I mean? You've you're, you're got an empty vessel here. Now we're going to fill it up. Something good. Something good right here called the Holy Ghost. You ready? Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in another language. With the evidence of speaking in another language. Now everybody needs to say it. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in another language. Speaking in another language. When the pastor says. When the pastor says. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of tongues. With the evidence of tongues. I'm going to speak the words. I'm going to speak the words. By faith. By faith. That God gives me. That God gives me. It's going to come right out of me. It's going to come right out of me. In the name of Jesus. You ready? In the name of Jesus. Raise your hands up, Greg, like this here. Say, and I'm going to, I'm going to touch the, like I'm touching the camera for every person. You ready for it? I'm going to say, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Just receive the words that he gives you right now. Receive the Holy Ghost. Just speak what he gives you, everybody. And those who are already baptized in the Holy Ghost, Pray for the people receiving right now. Receive the Holy Ghost. You're receiving the power and the anointing of the first century apostles. Right here. 
Just speak the words he gives. You release by faith. In the name of Jesus. Just let the words come. Somebody said, that's not a language. When I, when I do this on YouTube, they'll come at the bottom when they're, they'll say he, he is uh, speaking in an Arabic language. Come on out. Come on and receive the Holy Ghost. Just receive your language. You speak what he gives you. It won't be mine. It'll be yours. It'll be words you've never heard. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He's taking up residence in a very supernatural way. You become empowered with the Holy Spirit. All the gifts of the Holy Ghost are in this right here. You get a prayer language. If you're speaking in tongues, that's your prayer language now. That is your prayer language. That's what God has given you in receiving by faith the Holy Spirit. Just go ahead and release. I know you're st some of you are probably having a struggle with it. Just go ahead and release. Speak it out by faith. It's sounds you've never heard. It's words you've never heard. And you're not making it up. It's he, you, and the Holy Spirit. He'll talk me out of mind, but I won't let him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's your language. So let's do this here for the people who received the Holy Spirit. You just received in the name of Jesus. Your language. And this is how you activate what he's given you that's your prayer language so there's going to be things right now that you're praying for that you don't know how to pray and you've been praying oh god you know oh god you know lord you know lord you know i've been confessing your word lord you know but the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of tongues is your prayer language and it is the perfect prayer every time this is how you pray when you don't know how to pray he prays for you and he prays through you, and that gives him access into the situation that you're dealing with. So when you're, when you're saying, Lord, use the prayer that I'm going to pray for my job or for my school or for my church or for my marriage or for my husband or my children, things that they're going through, or for I need to have, uh, I, I, you know, I'm in bondage to, um, I need to have a financial miracle. And God, you've got to work something out. Use the prayer that I pray in the spirit to work that situation out. And I'm going to pray with you right now in the name of Jesus. And we're going to pray together and other people are going to pray for you. And we're going to intercede for that situation that you need. You Now, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You've got to pray yourself for what you're praying for. So you ready? Say in the name of Jesus. Are you ready, Greg? Yep, Say ready. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, look at this one here. I speak by faith. I want, I'm glad. And that's what you need to do. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Use the prayer that I'm going to pray. Use the prayer that I'm going to pray. In the spirit. In the spirit. By tongues. By tongues. For the situation. For the situation. That's burdening. That's burdening. My heart right now. My heart right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And here's what I say. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who is watching me right now or who will watch and want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and are going through something right now. I pray for you through intercession. Father, make it real to them. And Father, help them in their struggle that they're going through right now as we release by faith in prayer, praying over their situation right now in tongues. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for husband and wife. Over the businesses, over the marriage. Over the sick loved one. Reach wherever they're at right now. We intercede for them, Father, that your hands might work upon the earth. For those who are in a divorce situation, we pray over that right now. Yield, make it right, Father. The one that's go going through a death problem right now, Father. Someone's dying in their family. I pray, God, that you would help them and you would help them, Lord, in the name of Jesus to overcome. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, intercede right now, Father, so that the right prayer will be prayed in every one of these situations. They're listening to Deliverance with Pastor Henry. 
Ke la bashanda la boko yata la bosita la boko yata basai. He la masanda la boko yala basata la rabakasai. Those who are in Europe and listening all across the world. Ke la bashata la boko that are North Korea, South Korea. Shala boko yanda la basita la boko yata basai. Oh God, I pray you touch their lives and their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Set them free from tormenting mind controlled spirits. And Father, heal the past, deliver them, give them a bright future. Baptizing them in the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Woo wee. Somebody say that was crazy. Very powerful, Pastor Henry. Crazy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much, everybody, for staying here with us. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, you're welcome very much, Greg. What time is it? we got to get ready for church tomorrow, you know it. Boy. Ooh, it's only 930, man. We're we just getting started, aren't we? Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you're, you're preparing for church tomorrow, Pastor Henry? Yeah, y'all come on. Y'all tune in tomorrow. We're going to have a wild one tomorrow. Yeah. And I Jesus live in Christ. another state, too, and I love my wife and I and Sister Grace. We love attending church online. And one day, Pastor Henry, when you go on again, I want to share my story on how I found you through a cell phone. Wow. So, yep. Oh, look at this one here. Look at this one right here. This is so good. Uh, Pilot Chrissy says, Pastor, I received. Will the Holy Spirit continue to provide more utterance eventually? Yes. And that's what I was trying to tell you about this here is that let me tell you what will happen. And I, and I want to do a, I want to do a video on just nothing but the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues yes. uh, and deliverance because deliverance is exactly what happens so that you can um, receive the Holy Spirit. That's one of the purposes. Remember I said, God said, take them through deliverance, mm -hmm. lay hand on them for on their miracle, pray for them to uh, receive the Holy Spirit. So watch this here. So praying in tongues will be something that you need to to continually practice even tonight before you get ready to go to bed say lord i'm i'm praying the bible says in jude verse 20 it says you build up your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit in the holy ghost so when you're weak in faith and you're struggling say lord i'm recharging my batteries building up my faith use the prayer that i pray in the spirit to build up my faith and you start praying in the spirit you're getting ready to go to work monday or church, and you're saying, Lord, uh, use the prayer that I pray to prepare the ground that I'm getting ready to walk on. I'm getting ready to go in the work. I'm getting ready to go to church uh, and prepare the way. Use the prayer that I pray in the spirit to go into that meeting Monday or to go into court. I got a court session I got to go to. Lord, use the prayer that I pray. I'm interceding for that situation. It's the perfect prayer. I mean, you're praying to God in your mind, but that's all you know. But when the Holy Spirit prays through you, it's the perfect prayer every time. That's why the devil fights this thing so much. He doesn't want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. And Paul says, I speak in tongues more than you all do. That means he was praying in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a holy language, and you can speak in your language, and you need to pray in it. And uh, oh, someone's talking. They're writing the words down there saying <laughs> in the language. <laughs> Uh, I was told by interpretation of tongues by the Holy Spirit and another person when I was praying in tongues that God said, will deliver me, uh, as it says in Psalm 91, and it was what's going on in so many of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm telling you what. I'm glad you just said what you did because I was reading uh, Mandy's comment, and I was saying, what country is she from? <laughs> oh, did you see it? Yeah. Did you see it up there? Yeah, I was trying to. Mandy, I got to put this up. There you go. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's your language. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, don't be ashamed of the Holy Ghost, everybody, if you don't have it. Come on, we're going we're gonna to pray more with you. I'm going to give you some teaching on it. The Holy Spirit's for everybody. The language is for everybody. That's and. Right. uh uh, it's just step. It's one step in more power for the Holy Ghost for living victorious. That's why the devil fights it so bad. But uh, you pray, you believe. Say, Lord, I want to receive the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Raise your hands up. Just release what He gives you, and then just speak in the language He gives you. You're going to be all right. You know the 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 people 
who tune in Deliverance with Pastor Henry, I want y'all to know y'all are the best. I'm telling you what, you are part of that remnant that God is bringing up. That's right. And I just thank you so much for tuning in, being part of the program tonight. And my prayers are with every one of you. You know, we don't get anything for this. This is not what we're doing, is that we want to minister to you and for hurting people, for you can live your fullness. Your, and, you know, those, these, those church words are like destiny. So those are, those are catch words, destiny or a different level and another level and things like that. That is true what God does, but he does it through deliverance. And deliverance pulls those big stumps out of your life. He pulls those roots out of your life, things that's been rooted in there, and it lets you have good ground and good soil so you can sow those good words of Jesus and the, and the seeds of the gospel, pulling those roots out. That's what, that's what deliverance does. We pull mind control off so that you can put God's word in there and not be double-minded and things like that. Amen. Wow, you got a cousin there acknowledging you, Pastor Henry. Do I really? Who is that right there? I don't know who that is. On the very last comment. Uh, uh, there. Oh, I'm way down. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's my cousin right there. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, my cousin, Pastor Henry. She came <laughs> down She came down and got uh, went through deliverance and her husband and uh, went through the training uh, last weekend. So let me uh, let me just share this with everybody. You need to try and let it out and trust the Holy Spirit. He will provide the others. It, hey, look in here. Let me tell you how it's like. Is the, the scripture tells us that they spake as the Spirit gives the utterance. So look at this here. You're going to have to make a sound. Uh, and then you put words with it. The Holy Spirit will put words with it. You're not going to take your tongue and shake your tongue. But you got to speak with what he gives you. And the more you speak with him, the more you exercise your faith. And then you just uh, let the words just come right on out. But, yeah, um, that's good stuff. Very good. So, uh, anyway, so let me, I got, I got, let's do a little bit of uh, tidying up here. Um, training is going to be happening October 7th, 8th, and 9th here at University Parkway. It's called Level 2. You don't want to miss this. You want to make sure that you go sign up now. Where are you going to sign up at? Spiritualfreedomnetwork.com is where you're going to sign up at. If you need deliverance, you're going to go right down here to that going across the screen, 803-761-7233. That's going to give me a voicemail. You send me that voicemail, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot you back a text that's going to have a link in it. And in that link, it's going to say, go to uh, spiritualfreedomnetwork.com and click on the link there about how to register to get into the deliverance queue so we can pray over you. Mm -hmm. If you need deliverance, don't call. Go to the spiritualfreedomnetwork.com. Click on that top announcement that says if you need deliverance, fill out the information. I need to know what country you're in. I need to know your phone number. I need to know how can we connect. Zoom? Are we going to Skype? Are we going to FaceTime? I need to know that. I don't need to call you to find all that out. Go there. Fill out that information, shoot it back to us, and it will save us all that time trying to get this information and then trying to plan. You can select the day and the time that we need to try to call you and connect with you. So do that there if you would. I appreciate it very much. Make sure you share this with all your friends. So Spiritual Freedom Network, you're going to find how to sign up for deliverance. Also, if you want training, Make sure you go there. If you would like for us to come to where you're at, your church, you're a pastor, you want to be trained, we train people on how to do what we do here. And there's people that comes from all over the United States for us to do that. How here, about, right here, Aiken, what, South Carolina. Hey, Pastor Henry, how about the conference next week? Conference next week is going to be, what is that, brother? I can't remember the date. It's going to be um, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Next week is going to be the 4th, 5th, and 6th Conference in Mount Juliet, Tennessee at Greg Locke's Church, Global Vision Bible Church. He's going to have some very powerful speakers that are there. And, uh, and even uh, they're going to let me uh, say a few words as well. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be included in the lineup. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, on that. All and right. Pastor Henry, I hope you don't mind. Uh, and I hear there's a possibility you'll be on Deep Believer again in September. Oh, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, let's see here. I'm supposed to be on Deep Believer. I believe it is Friday the 9th. We're going to be setting up a second interview. And then she will probably release it the week after mm -hmm. uh, that she does. But, yeah, I have been contacted by Deep Believer to do another one. Jennifer Bagnashi uh, is her name. And to all those who support us, all those who y'all pray for us um, and we'll pray for you as well. I love you very much. Share this with all your friends. You know, they need mind control to be set free from mind control. And uh, if I get back on here and talk over the same stuff, here's what I'm going to do. If I tell you anything on these on these screens here or the stories and all, I'm going to tell you the truth. That way there, if I tell you the truth, I don't have to remember the lie. That's right. You know what I mean? I can only tell you the truth. And uh, and God is the spirit of truth and the truth has set you free in Jesus name. Amen. All right, brother. Pastor Henry. Anything else? That's it. Pastor Henry. Mandy wants to know what was that number? That number is 803-761-7233. Going across the bottom of the screen right now. This one here. Good night. All. Thank you for bringing the truth. No more headache. Thank you, Jesus. We love to train sometime. Can't in October. I can remember being nine years old and wanting to set people free. That's it. You're going to see it now. In <laughs> Jesus' name. Lisa, God bless everyone. All right, brother. Is that it? Yep, that's it. And God bless you. And I thank Jesus. Uh, All right. Here we go. We're going to get out of here. Y'all going to let me bring this up on the screen here. We're going to exit out of this thing here. Good night, everybody. We love you very much. Here we go. God bless everyone on the other side of that screen. God bless you. I've been your host, Henry Schaefer. I am a demon terrorist.